We're live. And I got the music playing. Right. Whew. Tease, touch, okay. Alright, goddammit. I forgot What's to up? change the Twitch settings. It still says Dragon Quest. Alrighty, let me know when y'all are ready for me to start doing my thing. You can start whenever. It's gonna take a while for everyone to, you know, get accustomed to their tokens and macros and stuff. Best right. to just dive right in. Alrighty. So, again, y'all keep working on that. Um, so, just brief campaign intro, and I've gone over some of this before, but just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, we are starting in the Imperial Province of Hibernia. This is on the frontier. Uh, the Xantin River has for several years been one of the extents of the Empire. Um, there have been efforts made to extend Imperial control across the river. Uh, so far, all have been unsuccessful. Um, it's a... It's not a super uh, heavily settled region as of yet, but there's a fairly uh, fairly large imperial presence, and there's a decent amount of uh, natural resources in the area that the Empire makes use of. So it's fairly important, uh, combined with the fact that the Dwarven tribes across the river tend to be rather aggressive, and they will most definitely raid across the river if they are not... Uh, dealt with in some way, whether that be military force or treaties or something. Um, your characters have come to this province for whatever reasons they might have personally. Um, we will talk about that in a minute. I think the first thing that we're going to do once I finish up my little summary here is have each of you introduce your character and maybe mention why that they are in the town of uh, Kaisium and where they are staying currently. Um, but things have not been the best recently. Um, not because of enemy military forces necessarily. The dwarves across the river have really not been any more aggressive now than they have been in the past. But because of the erratic behavior of the commander of the 14th Legion. Um, recently, he has been sending patrols off across the river for no apparent reason. He has been neglecting some of the defenses on his side of the river. Um, Discipline within the Legion has been beginning to falter, and while the common people, uh, the just Imperial citizens living in the area might not know all of the details of what's going on and why, they can tell that the Imperial military presence around this area is beginning to slip. There have been more bandits, there have been more um, you know, people going missing or being accosted on the roads by various uh, hostile forces, and they know that something is wrong. It does not help that many people have been experiencing very strange, very odd nightmares recently. Um, they have been become been becoming more and more common among the region, and no one really knows why. All right. Um, go ahead. Uh, the nature of these nightmares, are they the same for everyone, or are they just generic nightmares in general? They are not the same. Um necessarily it's not like everyone has the same nightmare every single night or that on a given night a whole bunch that everyone has the same one um general typical nightmares a lot of you know the common ones that just are present and there have been some rather alarming parallels if say two people compare notes and it's like you know hey man i've been having these really strange dreams the last few nights every now and then they run across some details that are oddly similar between them not always but every now and then okay um the town the city of kaisium is one of the largest on the frontier one of the largest in the province of hibernia it is not where the governor of the province lives but it is where uh, Ada's grandfather, the military general in charge of the three legions um, on the border, uh, resides. It's kind of the de facto military capital. And because most travel uh, to and from the 
legion camps, the various uh, the various um, villages that have sprung up around those camps, etc. Uh, most of that travel goes through Kaistium, so it is fairly well uh, traveled. Although, if any of you are from the more urbanized uh, central areas of the empire, the city will not appear to be anything particularly special. Right. Okay. Got it. Uh, just, just as a general question, because I like to ask these, um, how large is the military force uh, in the town? How, how many people are we talking about here in general? Uh, in the town itself, probably uh, no more than a couple hundred. Um, okay. There are detachments from the legions on the river. Um, there are, of course, city guard and whatnot that are largely uh, in addition to that. But most of the legion strengths are in the series of forts along the river. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, so you were asking before about uh, giving, you know, why we're in the town or whatever. Yes. Um, okay. Um, I have a home there. It's where I actually live outside of my uh, outside of my work. Um, I have not yet started to investigate uh, the issues, but it has become a problem for my business and my livelihood. So I have so sent out in search of an adventuring party to go investigate exactly what is the cause of what's been going on. All right. Why don't you go ahead and just introduce your character a little bit, talk about who he is, you know, in general, etc. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, his name is uh, Caius uh, Iovita. Uh, he is, uh, he's, he's not really, uh, his parents died years ago. They ran a, a business uh, on the outskirts of town where they would go on trips to the shadow plane to recover things to sell to uh, travelers who were traveling the road. Um, when they died, uh, he was left to run it in his own. He decided to take up the business and his, uh, but again, he was very, he, he didn't have anyone really to run it with. So he took up summoning as a, as a way to give himself a permanent business partner. Uh, one that he could trust more than a standard, uh, a standard person. Uh, so he learned that in about three or four years, uh, and he, you know, and that's where uh, Eostratia uh, came from. Um, and they have been working together uh, for the last ten or so years, uh, just working to make a living. And you know, and occasionally he'd go out on small adventuring raids, either to the Shadow Plane or elsewhere, in search of various things to add to his repertoire of goods to sell. All right, who wants to introduce their character next? I'll go. Okay, so my character's name is Domitia. That's one of the two most popular pronunciations I could find of the name. Mm -hmm. Um, She is a Kitsune Mesmerist. The Mesmerist is something that she just kind of grew up already knowing how to do because it's like a psychic power. She's completely self-taught but she barely actually understands what it is she just thinks she's um she just thinks she's uh really magnetic in terms of personality so she loves making friends but being a kitsune she comes from a very isolated village where people just kind of keep to themselves trying to live in peace and don't interact with the world beyond and that's not her style it's too constrictive so as soon as she hit adulthood she went out into the world and at some point down the line uh met the other heroes i'm not sure where or how you might have met some of them just about town um you might have it might be that you just meet some of them after we get started that's fine as well um so she's largely in the town just because this is where the wanderlust has brought her at the moment Pretty much. Yeah. Alrighty, sounds good. And I guess you could also say it's because that's where her new friends went, and she's following <laughs> them. Alright, that's fair. Alright, I'll go next. Um, I am playing Ada. She is a half-orc paladin, but she hasn't always been a paladin. Uh, she actually got her start in the gladiator ring. Her father was a very famous gladiator, used to be a slave, but won his freedom through his prowess in combat. And um, kind of 
was very popular with the ladies, including who would become Ada's mother, who was an elven woman um, of the Roan noble family. Um, they, their dalliance resulted in a child, and they basically had the equivalent of a shotgun wedding. Um, <laughs> uh, Ada was trained how to fight by her father, but unfortunately, about three years ago, he was killed in what Ada considers an unfair fight in the gladiator ring. And since then, she has uh, left that arena and pursued uh, sort of what she considers more more of a just path as a paladin of uh, Athena. Uh, most people in this world would know Athena by the name Minerva, but she specifically growing up in a region where many of the elves revere the older gods, she worships Athena. And she's in the town of Caesium because this is where her grandfather lives, um, the grandfather from her mother's side of the family. And she's been here for about a month, just kind of hanging out with, with her grandfather. Um, <laughs> yeah. At least you have a supportive grandfather. He's great. He's a giant teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, uh, the grandfather, he was, he's in this post because he's a member of a powerful enough family that they were able to leverage him the position, but he is not a military man in the least. They placed him in this in command of this post largely because this is where three of their three of the empire's most experienced legion commanders are stationed, and they figured that they could keep him in line. Uh, and he largely realizes that he isn't very much of a military mind. Lets his legion commanders do their own thing, and basically just coordinates between them when they need them, when they need it. Okay. And right. my grandfather's name is Eulos, for yeah. anybody who wants to note that down. Uh, E-U-L-O-S. It's entirely possible you'll meet him this session, depending on right. which exact met route you all decide to go. Right. Alrighty, Isaac, Kaze, when do y'all want to introduce your character next? I can do mine. Alright. My character is Alexander Zastva. Uh, he's rather young, he's a self- He's a slightly self-trained gunslinger who comes from a rather rich family, but was forced into exile once a curse was placed on him that earned him the ire of most communities he runs into. And his parents sort of had to publicly disown him, but they outfitted him with as much equipment as they could secretly taught him the skills he would need to survive and then just sort of pushed him in the right direction to possibly find a way to learn how to get rid of his curse. All right. And I, I suppose he probably would have just run into some of like one or more members of the party at some point. And since people to trust are hard to come by, ones that end up actually being okay, he'd probably stick around with. Alrighty. All right. All right, I guess that just leaves me. Mm -hmm. I am playing Lysias, who just goes by list because it's much faster for people to say. He is a drow rogue. He actually came up from what people consider the depths and he was originally taken as a slave due to his rather unnatural uh how do we say he looks unnatural because people aren't used to seeing drow so right. he was taken as a slave and for most of his young life he was forced into slavery mm -hmm. where he started picking up the traits of a rogue because generally because he was so stealthy, people were like, okay, go get this, go get this, don't be seen. And after about 60 years, because he's 117, he managed mm -hmm. to escape the slavery. And he fled to a half-orc homestead that took him in because they saw how horribly he'd been treated and he helped them out around there. Where he started to pick up on like their hot, their traditions and he came to bond with them 
but after about 50 years, he had to move on because mm-hmm. people were starting to follow him. Because he's he's came from the elf homeland. They don't forget. Right. And he's come out to this area trying to just escape being uh, found. And he's pretty much just lying low, doing what he has to do, occasionally taking the odd job, but he's using the name Liss in order to not be found out because they're looking for like his full name or this might not even be his real name. Nobody knows. He might have changed it. Alrighty. Sounds good. Um, So it sounds like we've got two people who are, uh, have been in town for a good while, at least Uh, Ada and um, uh, Caius, excuse me, drew a blank there for just a second. Uh, And we've got three people who are relative newcomers. Um, do you guys want to say that, um, that, uh, Domitia and, uh, Alexander and Liss, uh, if not arrived at the same time and, you know, met on the road, at least have been, uh, staying at an inn in common and would have, have a pa- had a passing encounter type encounter there? Uh, I'm probably not the one to actually agree, but I, I think that sounds fair. I think it makes a lot of sense given, uh, Given uh, how dumb Domin- how do you say that? Dominicia? There's no N. Sorry. Uh, Dom, wait. I gotta, I gotta say that like once. How do you say it? Domicia. Domicia. Uh, well, if Domicia's entire goal is to like be for, as friendly as people as ever to everybody, then it makes sense that she would probably like immediately, uh, you know, befriend Liss and uh, Alexander, right? I, I would assume. Because of just like them being sort of out, uh, outsiders, would that be the case? Um, pretty much, yeah. I mean, as long as anyone is willing to be friends with her, then she will consider them a friend. <laughs> okay, all right. Then I'm guessing that's probably why the three of them are probably together in the first place. Liz might be with them, but not with them. Like he just sort of hangs around, but he does his own thing. So, so he's so, probably so, just like there. Hey, we got a problem. Yes. So you're the kind of you're you're the one character in the D and D party who's just like is in the back of every scene, just kind of leaning on a wall, your arms crossed. <laughs> well, that and keeping my ears and eyes open because if someone starts shit, I'm gonna be the first one there with a knife in their back. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so what, 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 what we got in our standard group here? I mean, we got the, we got the the democracy guy, we got the uh, like the the DPS guy. Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, you guys don't have to be all, you know, close buddy-buddy, but at least you all have would have potentially seen each other and recognize each other. Right. Um, and I figure there's a fairly good chance that Ada has at least been by Caius' store at some point. Mm-hmm. Right. So. All right. That said, um, unless you guys have any more information about your characters that you want to get across to myself and to the rest of the party, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. All right, so we're going to start off, and I'm going to do a little bit of just a um, little bit with each of you, um, just some experiences that each of you have that are going to hopefully uh, get a push going to start moving things together. Uh, so let's start with uh, Caius, I believe. Okay. All right, yeah. So you uh, went to bed after a fairly... Fairly normal day uh, running your store. Less less busy than usual because, as you said, uh, the the recent difficulties have been hampering your business. But still, you know, made made some money, made a few sales at least. Uh, saw some new people. Um, you saw that that paladin of, of uh, Minerva wandering about um, right. the market square a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and you wake up the next morning, and everything is oddly quiet. Quiet. Um, you uh, get up. You get out of bed, um, almost, almost uh, robotically, almost as if your legs are just carrying you without uh, too much input from yourself. Um, well, this is and, good. Yeah, <laughs> and you, you just kind of stretch, step outside for a moment, and you see that the sky has this odd blood red hue. Uh, you don't see the sun up anywhere. It's almost as if the entire sky is just this burning red color. You also notice that there is absolutely nobody else around. Hmm. Did I plane shift in my sleep again? 
I'll be right back in a second. I'm sorry. Sure. Uh, hello, you guys there? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Okay. Um, it, 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 something just cut out. Continue. Um, yeah, I I was switched. I was accidentally tabbed out of the window I needed to be on. Okay. Um, so yeah, you you walk outside and you see nobody on the streets. You have never seen the town quite this dead, but it does look exactly like the town of Kaisiam. Um, there's the odd feeling of eyes on the back of your neck as if you were being watched. You feel this prickling fear and this overwhelming urge to spin around and look behind you before whatever creature is inevitably bearing down on you uh, jumps out at you and begins to tear you apart and you spin around and you see nothing there. But the feeling of being watched does not go away. Um, you hear what might be muffled breathing of some sort of predator uh, just outside of view. Um, you see a glint of what might be the reflection of an eye for half a second before it disappears behind a building. And as you uh, spin around in increasing panic, um, you all of a sudden turn around in time to see a flash of claws and teeth flying towards your face. And just before whatever it is slams into you, you wake up in your own bed. Um, this time, not uh, with a blood red sky outside and with the normal sound of the hustle and bustle of the city beginning to wake up in the morning. All right. Uh, I guess uh, I, I, wipe, I wipe, wipe the sweat from my brow. I, I go ahead and get the covers off and I step myself up out of bed. Um, and I immediately begin looking around to see uh, what Eustracia is up to. Um, what does he normally do when you're asleep? Uh, normally he's just working on various things, cl dusting things, cleaning things. He might be reading a book here or there. Uh, so he doesn't well, need to sleep, obviously, because he's not like of this plane. Right. Well, he is dusting off one of the shelves out in the main storefront. Just kind of casually greets you as you as you step in, as if absolutely nothing is wrong. Did uh did any uh any of the uh uh <laughs> did any of the little orphan boys come by again? Uh, remember, I did save those cookies for him. Uh, I believe we had uh, one in here uh, this morning. They he uh grabbed grabbed one and scampered off. <laughs> All right. Uh, hmm. The, one of the nightmare uh, happened again. Not sure what's up with that. Been a little bit worried about it. Hmm. You're not the only one who has been experiencing these, no? No, I don't believe so. I've heard some other stories from the people in town. Uh, that is concerning. Yeah. Not that you would know. It's not like you would dream anyway. <laughs> Side note. Um, how much do you want me to speak for your Eidolon versus you speak for him? Uh, I would like you to speak entirely for him, please. All right. Do you have any? Do you have any uh, personality ideas about him, or is he blank slate for me to build off of? Ooh. Honestly, how? how oh, oh. Um, who's the other of the Elric brothers from Full Metal Alchemist? Alphonse or Edward? <laughs> Alphonse. Make him like Alphonse. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've never watched Full Metal Alchemist, so he's basically uh. a kid in a suit of armor's body. Very naive. Um, as long as long as you keep him true to his uh, neutral alignment, I'm okay with whatever you want to do, personally. But if you want right. to make him like a child, that's fine with me. Mm -hmm. I was thinking someone very generally stoic, quiet, you know, mm -hmm. doesn't have a whole lot to say. Just like, oh, you've had this terrible nightmare for the last few weeks? Hmm. That might but be that, a problem. That's fine with me. Uh, right. I do. I go ahead and let him know that I'm going to be taking... Uh, a small trip outside. I'm going to see uh, what the what the you know if there's anyone coming up or anything like that. Basically, clear my head from what happened last night. Okay, uh, you step. Huh? Oh, did he uh, disconnect her? We lost him. We lost him. Uh, okay, hold on. Sure, he'll come back in. <laughs> I don't hear um, Hannah either. Did they lose internet? Well, they still they're still shown in the in the call. That so. it tends to it tends to remain there for a little bit. 
<clears throat> well, again, they, they did say that they had uh, iffy internet, so we'll just have to wait for them to get back. Oh boy. Well, I'm going to take this time to test out some of my macros. Sure. That's a good idea, actually. I'm going to do the same. Oh, oh okay. Isaac, when you when you booted it back up, did it did it clear up a little bit? No, it's still just as bad. I'm just learning to work with it. Uh, okay. Oh, I'll take a look at it later. If I minimize it, it goes away long enough for me to actually hit what I'm trying to hit. Okay, there they go. Yeah, okay. Um, no, uh, and I believe me, I, I understand what you're going through. The uh, the actual same kind of glitching aside, I've seen it before. Uh, okay, that's not right. I'm back. Hello, Kaze. Hey, guess what? The GM is gone. Okay. Uh, something disconnected them. Uh, we have to wait for him to get back. Are we back? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're back. Yay! <laughs> it's like as soon as I got back, you guys got back. That's weird. How many of us dropped just then? Uh, the two of you. Your my fi must have gone out. Yeah. All that all that happened, Kaze, is uh, you know, um, Caius woke up from a nightmare, some beast attacking him in the night. Uh, and he talked to Eostrazzi for a little while and is now heading outside. And that's when, uh, you know, hey, Richard... How, how do you pronounce the Eidolon's name? Eostrazia. Eostrazia is how you say it. With Eostrizia, that, sorry. With that spelling? Eostrizia. Eo that's how it is. Eostrizia? Yeah, that's I'm, how it... I'm that, hearing that's how R's it, and S's in places where there are none. Hold on a second. <laughs> can I just call her EO? EO is what you can call him, yes. That's How is it actually spelled? The text is too small for me to read. Very well, well, let me just let me just type it into the uh, pronouncer thing, and I'll make sure that of how it's pronounced again. Hold on. Because I get stuff wrong. You know uh, you can increase your font size, right, Kaze? How? Uh, I think it's in preferences. It Where might. Preferences. Uh, actually, I think that might just be for the chat. But you can try increasing it. It's under edit. Edit preferences. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I think we had an issue on the internet on our end, and it just gave up the ghost, which is why both of us just disconnected all at once. Okay. Eostizia. That's how it is. E There's no R. Eostizia. Okay. So now the U is pronounced like an O. It, I, when, when you, yeah, it's like an, it's like an O, yes. Eostizia. That's how I'm gonna stick with Eostizia. Whether it's right or wrong, it's Eostizia. Okay. Is it Latin? Yes. Yeah, Latin does. Latin's one of those languages that doesn't pronounce like it looks. Yeah. Sometimes. Like yeah. The, like Latin, Gaelic. Uh, there was one more. Heaven forbid a Welsh. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, Ga Gaelic is egregious with its pronunciations. Yes, but it, yeah. for sh but for short though, you can say EO or EU. Either works. All right, all right. So, um, at I had gotten we had gotten to the point where Caius like went outside and was starting to go about right. Yes. Okay. So yeah, um, you step outside. You're just kind of taking a walk around town. Everyone else seems pretty pretty much normal. No one else seems to be freaking out about monsters in the streets. Good. Good. Alright. Alrighty. What, what are the rest of our characters doing? Um I am getting to you guys. So while Caius is walking around, let's go to Lise for a second. Okay. Alright. Again, you have recently arrived and arrived in Kaisen, whether you just got here and this is your first night or whether you've been here a few days and just kind of been hanging out at the inn and seeing what you can feel out in terms of business opportunities that is up to you uh, but again you go to you go to sleep in your bed as you as you do um, and when you wake up you are no longer in the inn you are in uh, a dark wood you are in a is an old growth forest the trees here are huge um you can't tell whether it's day or night the tree cover if they're if the sun is out the tree cover would have would block it out basically um what you can see of the sky is this faint pale yellow glow um you look around briefly confused as to 
why you are here, where here is, and you hear movement off in the distance. Do you try to go toward, away from? Uh, Rapier comes out immediately due to combat honed instincts, and I am slowly going towards it, trying to be stealthy about it. All right. As you begin moving toward the sound that you heard, um, you notice that it's as if your feet are feeling heavy, and you glance down and you notice every time you place your foot down, it is as if the grass and the underbrush begins to try to wrap itself around your foot. Um, as you continue on, the uh, the undergrowth begins becoming more and more aggressive, for lack of a better term, uh, to the point where you are having to physically pull your foot free each time. Um, eventually, the vines, uh, a, a spring of vines shoots up, wraps around your leg to a roundabout knee or thigh level, and you fall, at which point the grasses begin to wrap around you to... Um, basically pin you to the ground um you struggle and fight you succeed in getting an arm free only for it to fairly quickly become wrapped up again and at about the point where you are completely immobilized completely unable to move you wake up and as with caius you are home in your well not home but you're in the inn in your own familiar bed and not in any way pinned down by vines and whatnot Okay, so I'm basically sitting in a corner because Drow Reverie. Okay. I'm just sitting in a corner meditating with my uh, back against the wall. That way, nothing could have snuck in on me. And I immediately check for my rapier, which is by my side usually. It is still there. It has not been moved. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a perception check to check the entire room for anything out of the ordinary. Or is that just a freebie? Um, we'll say you're taking 20, so consider that you had rolled a 20 on your perception check and add your modifier. DC 30, then. That I can pass a DC, DC 30. Okay. Um, you, you notice a couple sheafs of paper that had fallen, uh, probably just due to a breeze. Um, uh, you, the, the dust patterns in front of the door have not been disturbed, so you don't see that anyone has, uh, come or gone, as far as you can tell. It does not appear that anything was in the room with you this night, that last night. All right, uh, I'm checking the lock just to be safe, and also checking the window to make sure it wasn't swung open. Uh, door is locked, window is closed. All right, uh, I begin collecting my things and getting ready for the day, because there's no going back to uh, Reverie after that. <laughs> All righty. Um, so... Lisa's is beginning to go about his day as per usual. Um, and let's see. Give me just a sec. All right. Uh, Demisha, Demisha, yes? That how, that's how you're pronouncing it? Yes. All right. So you um, you went to bed again in the tavern. Um, you've made a couple of new friends um, over the last day or two, some other travelers such as yourself. And you go to sleep. And... You find yourself sitting again in the tavern's common room. Um, it is absolutely packed with people, busier than you've seen it since you've been here. And they are sitting together at tables, they are laughing, they are talking, um, but no one seems to be paying you any mind. It's almost as if none of them can even see that you're there. This immediately disturbs Demisha and she goes around and starts tapping people on the shoulder. Uh, so you walk up to a table uh, full of, you know, it's, it's packed with people. They're talking, they're laughing. You tap some of them on their shoulder. The laughter basically immediately ends. They all stare at you for two or three seconds and then turn back to their conversation as if you're not even there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start using my, um, yeah, what's it called? I haven't gotten my, all my stuff memorized yet. The, uh, which one? Hypnotic stare or something yeah. else? Yeah, hypnotic stare. I'm going to stare at somebody. Uh, does not seem to really have any effect. They appear to continue going about their business. Um, after a few minutes of trying 
basically everything um, that um, everything that you can think of uh, to um, get people's attention. You hear a voice whispering just in your ear as if someone has leaned over your shoulder and is whispering to you, although when you turn your head, you don't see anybody. Um, it appears to be a feminine voice, though you can't really place much else about it. You can't recognize it as anyone that you particularly know. Um, the voice whispers to you, um, you can make them notice you. If you, um, yeah, I can, I can give you that. Ah, dang it. Sorry. Um, basically it whispers, you can make them notice you, you can make them see. Um, and there's a flash across your vision. You're not sure if it's something that you're actually experiencing or if it's just a uh, image in your mind of basically you, uh, you standing up and gouts of green fire flying from your hands, beginning to engulf the room, people beginning to scream. Um, and basically immediate chaos as the entire room just catches on, catches a light with this unearthly green fire and you stand in the middle, apparently unharmed. Um, just as the entire room begins to become engulfed, you wake up again in your, in the bed that you went to sleep in last night, apparently, uh, completely unharmed. Now, is this the first time I've had this dream? This one in particular, yes. Depending on how long you've been in the area, you may have experienced some of the nightmares that people have been describing, but this is the first one you've had this one in particular. The first time you've had this one in particular. Okay, well, she just kind of wipes the sweat off of her forehead and says, phew, just a bad dream. <laughs> After all, <laughs> I don't know how to shoot green fire from my hands. That is a valid point. <laughs> All right, then she right. gets up, gets dressed, and goes to meet up with her friends. Alrighty. So, uh, as you're heading down, again, let's hop over again to Alexander. What uh, horrifying, what horrifying nightmare will he have? <laughs> Alright, so, um, again... You are also in the same uh, same inn as Demisha and Lise. Um, don't know how how well you know them yet, but you've at least seen them in passing. You are, you know, going to bed again, just like everybody else the night before. Um, you find yourself alone on a small boat in the middle of this expansive, massive lake. Um, the water is still; it's fairly calm but it stretches off in all directions far enough that you absolutely cannot see the shore um, in any direction that you look. Um, the sky is this pale, dark twilight color, as if it's halfway between day and night. You can't particularly tell uh, anything more than that. And it's rather peaceful and rather calm um, until you feel the boat rock a little bit. Looking out over the water, you see this dark shape of something large, something many times bigger than your boat, uh, swimming about uh, just below the surface of the water. It continues to circle. It passes under the boat a time or two. Oh, good. There's no sign of shore, right? Not that you can see. Um, are there any stars visible? Not that you can see. So I'm in the middle of a potentially like infinite lake, there's a massive sea creature. Engaging said sea creature would be a bad idea, probably. Do I even have any of my equipment? Um, you do. You have what you would normally be carrying on a on a any day. Well, I guess for now he would make sure that his musket is loaded. And then just try to not draw any attention to himself. All right. As you begin loading your musket and attempting to uh, make yourself and your boat as small and unnoticeable as possible, uh, the creature continues to circle, continues to pass, um, passes just under the boat and bumps it slightly. It rocks, but it doesn't quite tip over. Um, and then the shadow disappears for a moment. It is as if it is it is as it, it words. 
I can I can make sentences. It is as if it has dived down or traveled off to another part of the lake, and you are just at the point of hoping that maybe it is gone. When all of a sudden, it you see a wake coming through the water directly at you. It slams into the boat and tosses you overboard. Um, the water is absolutely frigid. Uh, you begin sinking down below the waves. You can still see it circling around and around. And right about the time that you begin to lose consciousness, you also awaken. Okay. At least that was a dream. <laughs> but what the hell? Yeah, he's going to take a couple minutes to collect himself after that. If you again, if you check around your belongings, nothing appears to be bothered. Your your musket is still there in good condition. Yeah, yeah. J just gonna rest a bit before he just gets on with his day. Alrighty, and that brings us to Ada. Oh boy. So, Ada, uh, you are in one of one of your grandfather's guest rooms, uh, where you've been staying for the last uh, little while. Don't um, fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you, as you might have guessed by now, also have one of these nightmares. Um, pattern might be emerging by this point. Um, <laughs> <coughs> excuse me. Um, you see yourself floating above the world floating above what you recognize as the empire that you have served or attempted to serve as a paladin of Minerva for the last several years of your life and intend to continue attempting to protect and keep safe. You see in, in a, not in the sense of directly perceiving them, but knowing that they are there, you see, uh, the threats that are gathering on every single border of the legion, the various, um, you know, people who would see it, uh, see the empire fall, either uh, outside forces who want to take land that the empire holds for themselves, inside forces who are undermining it, whether deliberately or not. Um, there is this multitude of threats plaguing the empire at every single turn. And you see the imperial military and various other adventurers dealing with some of those threats. You see people that you have stepped in personally uh, and helped before. Um, but for every, uh, every action where you see one of these threats deflected, you see a hundred more where um, the legions were too far away to save the caravan from bandits and everyone was slaughtered or where uh, the city descended into lawlessness and there was absolutely nothing that the guard could do. You see all of the people who could have used your help personally, but you weren't there. You were helping other people. You just could not be everywhere at once. And you see that for someone to actually you know, keep the empire fully safe, they would have to be. There's just too many, there's too much to deal with otherwise. You, the Empire gives off this aura of strength and power, but looking at it like this, looking at it from above with this myriad of threats plaguing it at every single turn, you see that all it would take is a strong push in the right place at the right time and the entire thing would come tumbling down. And plunge the world into chaos and anarchy and flame. And looking over this, uh, you also hear a voice in the corner of your ear um, whispering to you that your god gives you a minuscule trickle of power and expects you to step in and do what you can, knowing that it will not be enough. You see the gods on Olympus who sit back and basically do nothing while their people are threatened, uh, while people cry out to them for help and for aid. And the voice whispers to you that if you were to only go out and seize power yourself instead of begging for it from some deity, 
you could rule, you could take control, you could uh, deal with all of the threats. And you see your, a brief vision of yourself basically ruling over the entire empire as the next best thing to a living deity. And then right about that point, you wake up again in, your, in the guest room. Nothing, uh, nothing ha- appears to have been changed or bothered during the night. All right, well, I wake up and I just kind of sit there for a moment and stare out the window in my room, think, like looking over the city and thinking about how like, this is the same sort of view that I just saw in my dream. And I just feel like disturbed down to the core of my being that, that this sort of dream would come to me. I'm supposed to be someone who is very giving and very selfless and then I've had this sort of dream and I I don't know what that says about me and it's very very disturbing to me. It's it's not so much terrifying in a way as like oh I need to go pray <laughs> kind of feeling. <laughs> so uh, I get up and I head for the temple. <laughs> It makes you question yourself a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he, that's a pretty logical uh, thing to do, I think. <laughs> All right. So everyone has had everyone's had a bit of a not the not the most restful of nights, shall we say. Um, and you continue going about your business as uh, as a as you do, uh, varying from um, seeking religious guidance or just, you know, a walk outside to clear your head to, well, that was a dream time to move along. <laughs> um, you know, um, some of you, some of you took it better than others. Um, but as you are getting yourselves up, getting yourselves ready and beginning to resume your day, uh, you notice something, something odd, something has uh, slightly changed from the night before. On the back of your hand, There's a small mark on the back of your left hand um, as if it was a brand or a tattoo in the shape of an eye with either tears or drops of blood falling down from it. I walk faster towards the temple. (laughs) Have we seen this tattoo before? Not that you can recall. On anyone other than ourselves? Maybe on some of the other townspeople here? No. No. Can I take a religion check? Uh, sure. I can't actually see it because I'm wearing gloves. (laughs) That is fair. You might not have noticed. Alright, that's a 13. Um, it's not a symbol that you recognize. Um, there are a couple of deities that use something along the lines of an eye. Um... Every now and then, um, Mercury will use like an eye type symbol in the role of, you know, the messenger, you know, someone who just like goes around gathering information and knowledge. But that's very, very rare. Um, there are a few of the minor, more lesser known ones that might use a symbol kind of similar ish, but you can't place it exactly to a particular deity. Do I place it to any particular uh, demon? <laughs> No. <laughs> All right. Slightly comforting. Slightly comforting. Uh, I right. pers- once I discover that that I have that myself, um, I'll take some time. Uh, I will go ahead and put on some gloves to make sure that it's, it stays hidden from others. And I will be just checking around to see if anyone else has it, any sort of townspeople or anything of that nature, just to see if I'm not the only one. Okay. Um, I will... I'll say that as you are just taking a walk to clear your head, um, you do bump into Ada, um, also heading down with a rather brisk pace to wherever she's going. Okay. Uh, where are you headed off to in such a hurry? Oh, um, just just headed down to the temple to uh, speak with priestess uh, Andrea. I've had you know about the nightmares you've you've been here for a while i i think i need to go speak with the priestess 
Uh, I've been experiencing the same. Uh, are you sure that this has anything to do uh, with, uh, you know, the gods? I'm not entirely sure myself. Well, I'm not entirely sure either, but it makes me feel better if I go to the temple. Uh, do I uh, do I perhaps notice that she has the symbol in her hand as well, or? Um, in here. Yeah. So, uh, Ada, have you made any? Can you, can you mute for yeah. yeah. Have you um, made any effort to hide it? No, and in fact, she is nervously rubbing the back of her hand every three to five seconds. Okay. okay, so you do pick up that she is doing that, and you do notice at one point that she has the same symbol that you do in basically the same place you do. Okay. Has my character found or met up with them yet? Um, uh, Demisha and Elise and... Um, Alexander, we're all staying at the same uh, tavern, the same inn, so you may very well may have run into those two uh, while they were, you know, if, if they also come out to the common room. Um, whether or not you notice their symbols again, or whether they notice yours again, depends on whether or not you all take efforts to hide them or whatnot. My character has no reason to hide it. Okay. The character doesn't even know about it because he sleeps with gloves <laughs> on. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so are we? Are we with which group are we with right now? Um, we can be with either. Um, okay. Demisha, Alexander, and Lise. Do you all have? Do you all uh, have any interactions between the three of you that you all want to go ahead and do? Okay. Um. Demisha is going to walk over to the other two and say, Hey, do you guys know if I got drunk last night and got a tattoo without re remembering it? I can't say that's something I saw last night, no. Because I got Why? this. Maybe you I did, did get drunk and get a tattoo last night. <laughs> that's a rather odd tattoo to be getting. And I want- I don't know anyone who would give those around here. Has Alexander potentially noticed his yet? Um... You see, I'm not- well, he- he probably would have, because he doesn't sleep wearing gloves, he just wears them normally. So he would notice that he has the same thing, and he pulls back hit the glove on his hand to show that he has the same thing. So you got matching tattoos, it seems. <laughs> oh my god, we didn't get married, did we? <laughs> I hope not. Uh, Lise is going to peel back his glove very slowly, just because he's been hanging out with these two, and he's afraid that he went and got the same drunk tattoo. <laughs> Congratulations, you're all married to each other now. <laughs> Drunk. <laughs> okay, this is not normal. I wouldn't do this. Grant saying that, he actually has tattoos up both of his arms. <laughs> so he's standing here like, I would not do that, and he's got tattoos up his arms. <laughs> okay, yeah. And Alexander's like, I just don't drink, so like, um, what? <laughs> I don't care for the taste of the spirits around here. Well, uh, I'm not entirely opposed to a polyamorous relationship. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it so soon. You're not my type. I don't think that's what happened. <laughs> Lise just gestures over to Alexander like, this. This might have happened. <laughs> hmm. Okay, well... So... Go ahead. Uh, Demisha is going to ask the bartender if there are any nearby tattoo artists. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's, uh, there's one or two folks. The uh, fellow just across the street will do them, but uh, between you and me, I'd, I think I, don't, I wouldn't uh, go to him to get one done. He's uh, a little bit off his rocker, if you know what I mean. Uh, well, he likes the bottle a little too much as well. Um, well, what about to uh, get one removed or covered up? Uh, removing a cover, other than unless you just make a new one that's bigger over top of the old one, I don't know that there's much of a way to do that. <laughs> Pretty sure tattoo removal is not a thing in a medieval version of ancient Rome. <laughs> they just cut it off. But we have that's magic. That's an option. 
<laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, it is entirely possible that there is a spell in Pathfinder that would remove a tattoo, but I don't know of one right off the top of my head. Well, uh, Lise is actually going to use his detect magic at will and stare at the so-called tattoo. It does not. Always does that. It does not have an active magical aura. Um, you couldn't. You can't necessarily tell if it was placed there by magic. It very well could have been a instant magic effect that created it. But there's no ongoing magic held within the, within the symbol. All right, this checks out. <laughs> All right. Uh, hop as the as the uh, three of you wonder whether or not you are now a uh, not a couple but a triple I suppose. <laughs> um, <laughs> hopping back over for a moment to uh, Ada and Caius, um, you two have compared notes and realized that you two also have matching symbols in the back of your hand, and that is very very strange. Um, and are just kind of walking together and discussing, you know, perhaps what happened and what you saw, when uh, all of a sudden there's a bit of a commotion off to your side. Um, you're traveling through a, even though even though it's early in the morning, you're traveling through what's a fairly busy area of town. Um, you're near uh, you're near several of the temples. You're near the public baths, so people are getting up to either, you know take a you know go to the baths and hang out for a little while before work or go to a temple to do their morning uh do their morning prayers whatever whatever they feel the, uh like doing and a there's a there's a few beggars uh lining the streets as there are pretty much any time and one of them uh who apparently was completely nondescript to you all you took no note of them especially appears to have taken note of you um this this figure, kind of uh, wrapped in tattered, hooded robes, uh, begins pushing its way through the crowd towards you, uh, comes right up to Ada, roughly grabs her arm, pulls it toward her, and looks at the symbol on the back of, back of uh, her wrist. I would like to make a strength check to yank my arm back. All right, roll it. That's a 13, I believe. Ew. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> well, um, surprisingly enough, uh, she is able to keep hold of Ada's arm. Her, her hands clasp around the arm like a vice. Um, and as some of you have noticed, I have placed a token for her. <laughs> um... um. Do we have yes. ownership of this token? Because I can see the stat block template. Hang on a second. Can't move. No, it's not listed as being owned by anybody. And it is an NPC. Huh. Alright. Well, that's fine. No big deal. I haven't actually given her a stat block, so the yeah. minus two strength was just me deciding what her strength was like, basically. Yeah. On a whim. Um... She pulls your arm close, and in this raspy whisper of a voice, it sounds like she doesn't use it very often, um, whispers to you, you know, yes, you're marked. You've got the symbol. Um, they, uh, <clears throat> they have come for you. They found you. Um, you are being hunted now. Um, she Sorry. Uh, she lets go of Ada's arm. Um leans in very very close and it smells like she hasn't had anything but onions to eat for the last while like her, her breath is just the most revolting smell that you've ever smelled um and she whispers hang on a second i'm okay okay um, <laughs> she whispers um you know you are marked uh now that they have, they have seen you and they wish they wish to control you uh, you must you must fight them uh, you must fight their influence or else you will become like them um. <clears throat> just 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 because I'm standing next to this and looking at this um, I try to see if is she marked the old woman 
you cannot tell that she is right now, but her her hands, her arms are kind of uh, kind of obscured. Then um, I, I attempt to reach down and, and make her left hand visible. Uh, she doesn't. Uh, she doesn't appear to even notice that you're doing this. Um, but you see, um, you see old, kind of half faded tattoos up and down uh, her arms, and you do in fact see uh, not the not in the exact same place, but a smattering of these eyes all up and down her arm. Freaky. Um. You also notice, since uh, she hasn't directed her attention quite as much to you, and you're not quite as fixated on attempting to breathe as little as possible, um, that there are some guards beginning to move towards you all as well. Um, and there's a decent bit of, you know, still like commotion, like people watching, like you know, what what's going on? Why is this crazy lady talking like this? Yeah. Um, the guards approach. Um, there's three three guards approach. Uh, two of them come up um, on either side of her uh, and kind of basically grab her arms and pick her up. Not not roughly. Um, it's almost like, you know, it's not like, oh, crap, this crazy lady is accosting somebody. What do we do? It's like, oh, look, it's the third time this week we've had to deal with this. Yep. Um, and they, they begin basically leading her away uh, from the two of you. As she is being carried back into the crowd, uh, she shouts, um, five of them there are and five they will have marked. Find the others and together you will be able to break their curse. If you fail, you will simply, uh, you'll simply join their ranks and plunge us further into darkness. And about that point, she She's gets, too far away. She gets out of out of here, and you can still hear her kind of ranting a little bit. Uh, the last guard, the third one, kind of shakes her head, like I apologize for that. Um, we try to keep as many of the uh, uh, less uh, less stable ones out of the street as possible. But she, no matter what we do, she seems to keep slipping out. I I apologize. She won't bother you again. Well, uh, I, 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 who is she? I I asked the guard. Oh, just some old beggar woman. Um, no one knows exactly where she came from. Everyone, everyone seems to think that she was here before, you know, since since they've been here. Um, but she she will occasionally uh, do that, accost people for no apparent reason. Mad ravings, as far as we can tell. I wouldn't pay her any mind. Well, I appreciate the help. Uh, yeah, she was quite of a quite an eccentric old coot, I would say. Of course. Um, and the guard kind of nods, you know, like, you know, go about your business, like, you know, have a, have a, have a good day and turns around, lets you guys. All right. Well, as soon as they're out of, uh, out of your shot, I, uh, I do let, uh, Ada know, uh, about what I had saw on her arm while she was being accosted. Uh, That's so, unsettling. so I have, I have a feeling that maybe there is some, uh, I don't know, some reason for that. So maybe this god of yours could actually help more than uh more than I thought. <laughs> at least if if Athena can't help us, then maybe someone at the temple can. Well, we'll see. There are people there that are smarter than I am. And maybe they'll have heard of something like this before, or at least rumors. I mean I don't have to be at work for another two hours, so I have time. All right, then let's go. <laughs> all right, so you all continue on to the Temple of Minerva. Mm -hmm. um, they greet Ada as you know someone that they're fairly familiar with. Um, they ask her if she's there to see... Hang on just a second. Andrea. Uh, they ask if, she, if uh, she's there to see Andrea. You know, she... You know, yes, please. Um, they welcome her on in. Uh, if Caius attempts to go further, like past the uh, entryway, basically the the area of the temple um, where there are just a series of small shrines, they will stop him and say that he's not allowed to go further. Okay. Um, Ada, I'll, does, go ahead. I'll, I will simply wait for her return then. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to turn around and say, sorry, the... There's nothing, I mean, you've kind of got the wrong parts to come into the temple, so. Uh, believe me, I understand. You can all, I, Ada could also wait outside, but does she want to go on in? Yeah, I want to go in. 
Okay. Uh, um, just, just, so, just, just, just to say, uh, we've been focusing on ourselves for a little bit here. Do you maybe want to switch back to the other group before we do this? Um, we can if you guys have something else to add. I was, uh, for DM player transparency out of character, I had intended this to be basically the hook that brought you all together. Oh, okay, uh, you've okay. been told that there there are three I, others who have been marked. Right. I just wanted to make sure that no one was getting left behind, that's all. Sure. Mm-hmm. And again, if you guys, if you guys, uh, the three of you all who who are at the tavern, if there's anything that you all want to do, either as a group or um, individually, let me know, and just pop in. I was unaware that our characters hadn't actually met um, Ada or Caius yet. It's thought- possible that you. It's possible that you have some uh, passing familiarity with them, especially Caius, as he sells trinkets to travelers and that's what you guys are no no I, i've you definitely guys have seen not... them i've definitely seen okay them. okay you guys have not like linked up with them this morning mm-hmm. i've probably done business in the past due to like selling stuff that i've procured right yes mm-hmm. okay, so um what was our group planning on doing after they woke up today were they getting ready to leave were they getting ready to go see somebody well, that depends on you guys. Um, Lee said he was kind of hanging around town looking for potential business opportunities, so he's Kai's probably... Put out a job. Um, yeah, he's probably continuing that hand. Just suggested Kai's might have put out a job for him um, to go acquire something. Um, we'll say that that's the case, sure. Mm-hmm. That would connect... The, I think that would connect everyone pretty well, I think, if we did that. Okay. Depending or, yeah, on the actually, job. I would have brought Alexander, or at least suggested they come along. Right. Actually, yeah, you had said earlier that um, Caius was looking for adventurers, maybe to help see if they could figure out what was going on. Maybe, maybe the three of you have uh, run across that. Yeah, that that's fair. So yeah, we can do that. So I, I basically put out a uh, a thing just saying looking for adventurers uh, to investigate uh, due to poor business, and uh, these were the three that happened to show up. So yeah, so you're aware of me. You're aware of my presence. All right, if, that so sounds, the... if, that, if that sounds fair to you guys. Okay, so are yeah. we going to go meet up with you at the temple? Assume, because I think our characters would assume that since you are paladin, you'd probably be at the temple every day anyway. As well, I'm not paladin. Yeah, the paladin. No, uh, the, I, I, to, I told you that I would meet you at, at opening in my shop. So, in, so as soon as I'm done at the temple and go to work, that's when you guys would meet me. All right? We have about two hours because you would have told us your opening hours, so we have two hours to kill before then. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay, Can well. You go take a bath <laughs> near where the crazy lady was. Uh Oh, also, one more question. Do we already have that mule that carries all our stuff, or are we going to get it later? Um. Okay, sorry, my audio just died for a second. I think it's back yet. Um, you're asking if you guys had a pack animal yet? Yes. Um, sure, I will say that one of your group just ha- brought one with them. Um, maybe least, maybe it's one of the things that Lise has acquired at some point. <laughs> um, I don't it's, know. A, it, it's, it's a freaking hippogriff. It, it would it would make sense if our group had the mule since we're the travelers and Caius is the merchant. I borrowed a mule and I just never returned it. That's entirely fair. As um, you do. Jess, since since carry capacity is such an issue for so many of us, uh, yeah, you guys you guys just have one, um, and yeah, we'll we'll say at least borrowed it. <laughs> quote what unquote. I was gonna say was for the two hours before the opening, I was gonna suggest that we go. Uh, check into that tattoo parlor just to make sure that mm-hmm. he has nothing to do with this. Oh, and if anyone's wondering why I don't have a pack animal, uh, that's because um, Eostitia, uh carries most of my things for me. That's why. Okay. I don't need one because I'm a beast. <laughs> Not all of us can deadlift the pony. <laughs> <laughs> My sister, she actually can. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, so whatever is happening now. So the three of you um, make your way to the tattoo artist. He is 
in a different part of town. It's it's a fairly decent walk. Um, you guys just go up, <laughs> knock on the door, basically. It's a tattoo oh. parlor. Do we need to knock on the door of a shop? Um, it's the door is closed. They're not open yet. It's still early in the morning. Oh, um, well then, there's no point in us being there. I'm going to check around, uh, look for footprints matching ours, just to see if we had gone that way. Um, in general, it's uh, streets and whatnot around, so not much in the way of footprints, and anything that would have been there would have gotten wiped out. Um, you don't see any footprints matching yours like wandering around. You do uh, see one set of footprints that might be kind of similar to Alexander's um, leading kind of around behind the <clears throat> excuse me, behind the uh, tattoo parlor but you imagine that they probably belong to the drunk fellow who is currently passed out behind it <laughs> and uh, still sleeping hmm. well I'm going to turn them like okay we did not come this way the only one who might have and I, I motion towards Alexander, but then I point at the drunk and just to say, it's probably him, though. <laughs> yeah, given, that the, uh, given that he is a similar build to Alexander and the footprints lead directly to where he is currently collapsed, it's a fairly <laughs> safe bet. Yeah, we, we were not here last night, so, and I, I still have the, I had the glove back on. I just but motion towards, like, this was not the work of this man. <laughs> no. Besides, I don't think it's very likely that he would somehow be tattooed unconsciously. <laughs> no, but it's it was still a safe bet to check any potential leads. Mm. <clears throat> Wine can do things to you. <laughs> All right. So after you have done this, um, checked out the tattoo parlor, um, you can go ahead you can make your way to kaisa's shop or you can continue about if you want to um try if you want to do anything else before we uh before you head that way it's still it's taking you a while to walk over here and it's going to take you a while um to walk over to the shop but you're still going to be waiting for maybe about an hour uh before he opens the shop up right okay I'd say right. just check her equipment and just prepare. Mm -hmm. I'll be back. What's in, the name of, find out? I'll be back oh, in just yeah. one second. I'll still be able to hear you guys. Okay. Sure. What's the name? What's the name of our pack animal? You guys. I didn't name, name it, it once because <laughs> I just borrowed it. So I've just been calling it. Uh, borrowed. I, its name what? is Steve. Steve. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I, I've been calling it. Uh, I can't think of a name right now. I'll I'll come up with one in a bit. Okay, all right. All right. All right. Okay, back to the temple then, I assume. Yeah. So the um, priestess, whose name I totally remember, um, Hannah named her, so uh, Andrea, yes, I will endeavor to not forget that. Um, Andrea meets Ada fairly fairly warmly, you know, asks, you know, what, what brings you here this morning? Uh, I was just wondering... Um... If you knew anything about this mark, and I'm just going to show it to her. No beating around the bush. I'm just going to show her. Uh, she seems concerned. Um, she seems kind of confused. She takes Ada's hand, looks at it more closely. Um, says, I've, I don't recall having ever seen a mark exactly like this before. Um, do you know where it came from? She kind of rubs at it. Like it, it doesn't appear to be ink or a stain or anything. I, um, it was just sort of here when I woke up this morning and apparently I'm not the only one. Uh, the trinket seller, uh, Caius, he's outside the temple. He, he has a mark just like it. Um, she, again, kind of concerned, um, says, come with me, please. And she steps out onto the um, foot of the temple where Caius is waiting, um, nods toward him um, respectfully, just a, as, as a welcome, um, and says, you know, may, um, hold, holds out her hand toward your arm. Um, if I may, uh, Ada here told me that 
there was a there's a mark on your uh, that matches hers. Yeah, Kai Caius goes ahead and removes his glove and he puts his hand out for her to look at. Uh, she also examines that and yeah, hmm. This is concerning. Um, and neither be. of you have any memory of where this cam comes from. Well, I do. It's you know explain the cam when I woke up, but I do relay the information about the uh, beggar woman with the similar marks and the warning that she gave us. Um, beggar woman. Um, do you mean do you mean Metia? Metia. Um, I, she. I was not aware of her uh, ramblings were anything more than nonsense. Yes. Um, well, I, I think in most cases I would agree with you, but. Uh... This seems a little too on the nose to be just happenstance. Um, and was there anything else strange that happened last night, or did you simply wake up with these symbols? I mean, the nightmares, but those are getting to the point where they're not strange. Right. And she... as far as, and as far as I can remember about my nightmare, I don't remember receiving it in the nightmare. So. Hmm. So both of you had one of these dreams, and you both wake up with some sort of symbol. It's one that matches a woman who I've never known to spout anything other than base ramblings. She kind of she kind of you know rubs her head a little bit. Um, I'm afraid I don't know what is going on, but I fear if. I fear this is too much to be a simple coincidence. Um, things have been, I'm sure that you know, and she nods toward Ada, um, things have been strange here recently. Um, not just the nightmares, thing, something has been going, along, going on with uh, many of the Legion officers. I do not usually deal with them directly, but um, our... Paladins and clerics occasionally uh, are required to work alongside of work alongside of them, and they have been giving me rather disturbing reports recently. Um, I cannot I cannot help but think that this is all connected. I cannot help but think that this is not just some strange coincidence. Um, unfortunately, I do not know that I can give you any anywhere to start other than the strange occurrences that I'm sure you already know about, but. I fear this might be something that you need to look into. Uh, she turns to Ada, says, um, "As always, you know, I have you have my fullest backing. If there's anything that I can do to assist you, let me know, and it will be done." All right, I uh, hold out my hand, palm down, um, to her, and she places it palm up and kind of fingers upraised. It kind of looks like a tree, roots and branches. Okay. And with that, I nod and I look over to Caius and say, well, we should probably do something about this, but... At the moment, uh, I'm afraid I don't have much of a choice. I have a previous engagement I must get to. Uh, I hired some adventurers to look into the recent happenings around town. Uh, you're free to come with me, but I'm going to have to get back to my uh, shop here in a few minutes. Well, if the recent happenings have anything to do with the marks on the back of our hands, which Andrea seems to think they might, um, it would probably be in my interest if I come along. So I'll come with you. All right. Um, yeah, I'm d disappointed that we really don't have much of a uh, <laughs> of a goal in mind. Um, we probably we're gonna we're probably gonna have to find the uh, the beggar woman again. But what did you say her name was? Uh, Metia is what she's Metia. called. Okay. Uh, do you have any idea where she holds up, uh, where we may find her again? Um, I have no idea where she stays. She's been seen in different places. Um, you said that the guards took her away, perhaps? Right. Yes. Then I would check the town uh, prison. She normally, she's been uh, in and out when she begins bothering citizens. Always seems to slip away, but she's usually there for a few days after they bring her in. Okay. Yeah, well, I think it's best to get as much information from her as we can. Uh, thank you, though, and Caius does uh, bow to her, and you know, just for courtesy's sake. All right. Well, lead the way, Caius. Thank you. All right, and I'll do that, and I'll walk her back. Um, so, yeah. 
All right. <laughs> so you guys get back um, roughly an hour or so before strict opening time for the shop. And to your somewhat surprise, you see uh, Domitia and Liss and Alexander already waiting for you and kind of checking over their gear. Oh, uh, you three are a bit early. Are we married too? <laughs> what? I'm not sure what you mean. Then she shows him her hand. Oh. Just uh, uh, as an aside, so I can picture this in my head, how tall is everyone's characters? Uh, uh, my character is rather short. My character is... Five feet, exactly. Four Aww. ten. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm 5'5", five, five. Eostizia is 6'2". I'm 5'4". Alright, right, uh, Ada's 6'2", as well. <laughs> you have the same size. is just staring up at Ada and just <laughs> looking at her. <laughs> He's star- um, she's staring down. Uh, she's I, never quite seen someone like you before. I, I go ahead and yell uh, to Eostizia to uh, bring out uh, the plate of cookies and to get the shop open a little bit early. We've got some discussions to, discussions to have. Yes, such as the possibility of not only befriending, but marrying as many people as possible. <laughs> I'm pretty uh, sure we didn't get married. I would remember meeting someone like this, and I point at Ada. <laughs> uh, I actually wait Ada until... nods, and I was like, completely fair. Completely fair. I, when I, when Eustacea comes out, I actually am going to... Uh, remove one of his uh one of his gloves and i want to see if he has a mark too he does not okay well hmm. he gives you a slightly quizzical look but doesn't question it (laughs) as much as you can tell a slightly quizzical look through his mask (laughs) right uh and just to let you know the whole mask thing uh he doesn't actually have a face under that it's literally just his face got it so yeah um anyway so uh I guess it'd be best to let you all know why you're here. Uh, uh, as I had stated, I have been getting some uh, poor business recently due to the military involvement uh, and the recent bandit raids. And I needed some group of individuals to try their best to, you know, figure out exactly what's going on. Uh, and, uh, well, it seems that we have a little bit more connected than I originally thought. Um, and just as a side note, also, Richard, um, how much w- would you say I would have paid these guys? Because uh, I assume I'm paying them, right? Um, well, that kind of depends on your means, I suppose. Um, kind of standard for adventurers is uh, for a decent bit of the payment to be done through whatever loot is found right. uh, what, during during the uh, course of their adventuring. Um, probably based on just you know the resources your shop would have like a couple hundred gold a piece seems fairly reasonable yeah let's let's say about 300 gold a piece then we'll say okay all right uh okay well uh (sighs) the problem is i have no idea where you would even start uh i guess it'd be best to know exactly what your guys's knowledge on the area is um so what do you know of about the current uh military standing in the area. Why do we know? I, I need to be well, right back again real quick. Okay. Well, uh, not to hop in on anybody's toes here because I didn't sign up for this contract and certainly not expecting any sort of payment even if I tag along. I, as you know, have an investment in this as well. Um, if you want to know about what's going on militarily, my grandfather is the one in charge of the forces here. Really? Yes. Then do you have any idea as to why there's been such unrest? Ada's going to pause for a minute and choose her words very carefully because these are citizens and she wants them to feel safe. But she also knows her grandfather and knows that her grandfather really doesn't know what's going on either. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, Lisa's gonna cut in actually while she's thinking and just turn like there's 
There's unrest because people aren't sleeping well with these nightmares, obviously. <laughs> well, yes, that is obviously part of it. Uh, however, uh, I mean, I'm not much of an adventure type myself. I do some adventuring, which is why I'll be accompanying you. But I'm not really sure. I'm not really knowledgeable on majority of this kind of stuff. So uh, I don't think it's just the nightmares, personally. <laughs> there might be something more. Uh, and hmm? go ahead. Uh, nothing. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to give her an appraising look and then turn back towards the pack mule that I brought along and m motion towards it. You'll be more useful for the, you'll be more useful than cranky over here. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. <laughs> um, as I'm thinking, I just I decide to leave my grandfather out of the conversation entirely and just tell you all that from what I understand, it's legion 14 that has been having the most issues and this is the legion that is sort of crucial to the entire formation because it's the one that holds the bridge across the river okay. it's also the legion that is most closely stationed to the town of kaisim the one who like you see soldiers from all three of the legions that are stationed on the border but you see the most from the 14th and Again, you all might not have, strictly speaking, noticed the uh, details of it, but you would have noticed, you, you. now that you think about it especially, you've seen fewer Legion patrols in the area than you usually do. Okay. I would then, have noticed that in particular with my line of work. Mm -hmm. Probably so, yes. But does that mean, still, I'm not sure where to start. Uh well, I do explain about the old woman and the marks and everything and our trip to the uh, the church or whatever. Um, you know, and I, I guess I'll leave it to them to come up with some sort of plan because I'm not really sure what to, where to go or what to do. So speaking out of character in this case, um, you've got a couple of potential leads. You could go and try to talk with the woman and see if she can explain a little bit more. Um, you could try to get in touch with Ada's grandfather. Um you could attempt to follow up on the commander of the 14th Legion. Those are your kind of probably what would be the three most obvious routes of action at this right. stage. Well, two of those options involve dealing with people who are potentially not right in the head. So speaking with the commander of the Legion probably sounds like the most rational choice. Okay. So yeah, they, I've got uh, invaluable you know, info from people who aren't quite right, so I'm gonna go for. <laughs> I'm gonna uh, air towards the woman. Hmm. Well, it probably would be best for us to speak to more than just one, anyway. Uh, but the commander of the 14th Legion, where is he stationed? Um, the fort right there at the bridge, the one Castrum Liberium or Castrum Liberium, uh, that is the headquarters of the 14th. That is okay. where its Legion commander should be most of the time. So it's going to be yeah. a bit of traveling to get there in the first place. Yeah. I say we split up, talk to uh, Ada's grandfather and the old woman, and then make travel plans for the next day. All right. I suppose so, that sounds fair. Yeah, it'll be fairly easy for me to get an audience with my grandfather. He loves me. <laughs> um, <laughs> th that was out of character. <laughs> um does who would like to come along or would we like to go as a group and do one thing at a time uh i'm gonna go ahead and keep my shop open for the rest of the day uh, at least so i can get what sales i can um eustitia why don't you go ahead and head with uh sorry i'm memorizing the name with ada uh go and meet with her grandfather all right uh eustitia kind of nods silently turns to face ada Gives expecting look like, I have been told to follow you. I am ready to follow now. <laughs> I would just like to just roll a sense motive on this guy because I can't really read him very well. So, so just, 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 just try trying to get a good read on him and sure. what he is. Sure. Roll knowledge religion as well. Um, and to be clear, that was that was not something that he said out loud. That was just kind of the sense right. of the look that he's giving. Right. All right. My sense motive was a... 12 and my knowledge religion was an 18. Okay. Um, since motive, he doesn't appear to be 
meaning you any kind of harm. He's just very – he's looking at you intently, um, appraising more than any more than anything. Um, knowledge religion, you do – excuse me. You do recognize uh, Eustitia as a psychopomp. Um, the mask is fairly distinctive. Um, psychopomps are a type of outsider who are primarily concerned with escorting the souls of the dead to the underworld. Um, they are – in general, of true neutral alignment, um, they tend to be very, very devoted to their tasks. Um, and while it is not the most common for one to form a bond with the with a summoner, uh, as this one apparently has, when they do, they are fiercely loyal. All right, I make a mental note of that. All right, so. Uh, Ada and Eustitia are going to see uh, the general of in command of the forces here. Um, who wants to go with them, and who wants to go investigate the prison? My character I'm probably not welcome at the prison. <laughs> <laughs> My character it depends on how long you've been there. <laughs> how long have you been in this town? Long enough to probably have a bad reputation with them. Fair. <laughs> All right, please go ahead. My character literally cannot decide which sweet old person she wants to befriend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna turn to Ada. Like, uh, you know this, uh, you know this area better. We'll just come with you, and then you can show us to the prison afterwards. All right, all right, sounds good. All right, y'all do have all day, so. Um, so Caius uh, stays behind at the uh, shop. He finishes up the opening. What's the shop What's... named? Oh god, that's a that's a good question. Um uh let's just do it something like uh the dark isle. We'll call it that. How about Alright Don't mind the spook. Don't mind the spook. <laughs> <laughs> that's on like their advertising posters. <laughs> yeah, like the logo is just um is uh Eostesia's face in profile. <laughs> we promise he's friendly. <laughs> he don't bite. Plus, it sounds like a D and D ish shop name, you know. Fine, we'll yeah. go with that then. What'd you say it was called? Don't mind the spook. Don't mind the spook. Sure. Okay. All right. Um. So yeah, you said you had it mostly set up. Caius is able to fairly easily finish getting everything together, get the shop opened. Uh, the rest of you take off after Ada. Um, and you head toward the uh, nicer section of town. The, the shop is kind of near the outskirts. Um, you're heading in toward the center of town where the big, fancy, rich people's houses are, basically. Um, Ada uh, walks up to the gate of one of the, of one of the large houses, uh, is basically immediately waved through. Um, you all get a couple of glances from the guards, but... In general, you know, Ada's like, you know, there with me and, okay, no further questions, come on in, you know. Um, and you step inside. Uh, it is a fairly elaborately furnished house. You can tell whoever uh, owns this is of means. Um, and um, there is a servant uh, at the door who, you know, welcomes Ada back, um, you know, Come on in. Come come along. I see you've found some friends. Friends. Uh, very well. Um, are these are these people seeking an audience with your grandfather or? Uh, actually, all of us are at the moment. So if you could tell them that I'd like to see him. Um. That will. Um. Most certainly. Uh, I believe he is still uh, performing his morning ablutions. Uh, but as soon as he's finished, I will. Uh, have, I will tell him that you are waiting for him. All right, sounds sounds good. Thank you. All right, the servant disappears upstairs, um, and fairly quickly thereafter, uh, you see a uh, elven man uh, coming down the stairs towards you all. Um, fairly hastily dressed, it looks like he finished up and got ready to go in a hurry. Um, looks. Middle-aged-ish, but you're especially, um, Lise, you know, he's fairly old. Um, let's, hang on, let me check my notes real quick. Alright. Yeah, 
he's he's probably more than a century, quite possibly more than two if he's aged well. Um, but he comes down the stairs, uh, beaming okay. um, at Ada mostly and at the rest of you all. Um, you know, welcome, friends. Come, come up, uh, come in. Um, Ada, my dear, uh, what what brings you all uh, to me on this fine morning? Good morning, Grandfather. Uh, you all notice that when um, Eulis comes and decides, Ada visibly like straightens up her posture a little bit more, uh, squares her shoulders, sort of like she's just trying to fit in a little bit. Um, and you probably will have picked up earlier with the servant that even the servant has a sort of more refined way of speaking than Ada does. Um, but... She's uh, going to turn, gesture to the others, um, and at this point go, I never got any of your names. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Uh, Lise is busy hiding behind Ida, trying to disappear into her shadow. (laughs) Roll stealth. (laughs) Uh, Let me pull up my modifier. How did we forgot to give names? (laughs) I'm Domitia, your new bestie. (laughs) <laughs> do you direct that to Ada or to uh, Eulis? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 25 stealth roll. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, Eulis doesn't even notice that you're there. I just whisper into a- Ada's ear as best as I can. Hide me! <laughs> Ada's gonna sort of look at him kind of concerned and pat his little head um, and then pretend he's not there. <laughs> Alright, uh, is Alexander gonna introduce himself? I think Alexander's player is still not here. No, I'm, no. I'm here. Uh, oh, okay. He just sort of waves in greeting. And uh, Eustitia just kind of stands there stoically as he does. Um, he just very small nod in the direction of Eulis. Um, well, you know, regardless, you know, any any friends of Ada's are, are well, more than welcome in my home. Um, he goes over and he, he gives Ada a nice a nice hug, like kind of glance. He notices uh, at least behind, behind her, like kind of, oh, star- oh sorry, I didn't see you there, sorry. Um, um, doesn't seem to take any, any further note of him. Um, it's it's more like he's surprised than anything. Um, even though normally speaking, the elves don't typically have a uh, very positive response toward the drow. It seemed to be more of a, oh, I'm sorry, I I missed you there, rather than any you know any other kind of um, any other kind of you know shocked at his appearance kind of thing. Uh-huh. Um, Lee is going to calm down a little bit and just step back out of the shadow and give a small bow. And introduce himself with his nickname of Lise. Mm-hmm. Um, he was kind of nods. You know, well, well, pleased to meet all of you. Um, but Ada, dear, you you look concerned. Please, um, come with me. Let's 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 go into the study and we we can talk about whatever's on your mind. Uh, so he turns around, um, heads back upstairs, uh, leads you all into a fairly well furnished study. Um, lots of nice, comfortable chairs. Um. He sits down behind uh, behind one of behind the uh, desk within the room. Uh, motions for the rest of you all to sit. There are more than enough chairs for all of you. Uh, the same servant as earlier comes in with a uh, small uh, bottle of wine and some glasses. He quickly pours himself one and motions to motions to the rest of you. You know, like would, would any of you else like some wine? Uh, Ada declines. Um- Past experience and, lends to no. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a little too early for Ada right now, and there's there's business to talk about. Um, she's going to sort of. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I, I sorry, trying, sorry. I'm trying to figure out. I, I, just, I got I got this image in my head of Eostitia just um, you know, taking a glass and drinking it, just pours all over himself. <laughs> Lisa's is going to stop Eustacia from taking a glass in case he goes for it. <laughs> so he kind so Eustacia does not sit down. He kind of looks curiously at the wine, 
goes to reach for a glass, and then Lee's kind of like, no friend, no friend, sorry. <laughs> and he like, just, no. <laughs> he stops and just sits back and, and waits. <laughs> so, uh, Grandfather, we're actually here. I know you and I've discussed very little about what's actually going on uh, with your charges uh, out here, the forts, um, but myself and the others were wondering if there was anything we could do about uh, Legion 14. Uh, the 14th, you say? Um, let's see. All us is commander of that one, I believe. Uh, seems a fine fellow last time I saw him, although he hasn't been by in a while. Um, I know I've gotten a few letters uh, from my other two legates regarding some concerns that they might have had. Um, I hadn't paid it too much mind yet. I'd intended to send a send a group out to go and check on the fort, but it just hadn't come up yet. Um, you know, things things are busy. Uh, we've got uh, we've got plenty of things to to deal with out here. I've got a uh, a couple of sen- uh, family senators and their families coming out uh, uh, in a week or so. Grandfather, if if we could maybe, um, I know you like to tell stories, but <laughs> could um, could you? Maybe tell us a little more about Legion 14. Sorry, sorry. Um, yes, I've heard some concerns from some of the others. A few of the reports have been late. Um, as I was beginning to say, I was uh, going to put together a, a group to go out and visit. May have gone out, gone down myself, although I rather like it here better than uh, out on the out on the forts. Um, but. Certainly, if you wish to go and, and check on that, I will possibly send a detachment of soldiers with you just to ensure that you uh, are able to make it safely, um, if you wish for it. But um, yes, if, if I, I could certainly use somebody to go and uh, see what's going on. I'm afraid I can't uh, tell you very much about it. You say you've gotten letters. Um, do you still have those? Uh, certainly. I've got them here somewhere. And he begins uh, rummaging through his desk, flipping, flicking through papers. Um, he doesn't appear to be the most organized man. He's got just uh, stacks of letters, stacks of documents. Um, he picks one up. But this is, oh, wait, no, this is, uh, this is last year's uh, tax, tax information. Uh, sets it back and, you know, kind of going through. Um, here's one of them. Um, <clears throat> hang on just a second. Uh, yes, um, Lakea, the commander of the 13th, has been uh, the one that's been uh, writing to me the most about it. She seems uh, rather concerned, um, hands it over uh, to, to Ada specifically. Um, opening it up, uh, you see that um, it's it's a very uh, formally worded letter um, raising concerns. Uh, she notes that uh, her own soldiers have reported that uh, several sentry posts have remained unoccupied. That the 14th was supposed to have was supposed to have kept guarded. That uh, they have been uh, dealing with uh, a group of brigands who seems to be withdrawing back into the 14th's area of responsibility, and the other legion appears to be doing next to nothing about them. Um, and just in general, uh, makes note of you know as I as I have said in my previous letters. Uh, please, could you investigate this matter? Um, he doesn't hand you any of the previous letters exactly, but apparently this is not the first. I go ahead and after I give it a cursory glance, uh, pass it over to the others. Wow, that's silent. It was here. Yeah, I put okay. in a, a token for Eulus on the on the Hibernia map. So, well, hold on. I, I, I'm, I, I'm here. I'm just wondering why none of the other three players said anything. Uh, sorry, I had to step away suddenly because there was an emergency. Okay, uh, but did you hear everything? Or... No, I didn't hear anything because I just got back because like it was a loud clattering. I had to make sure someone wasn't trying to get in. Uh, but basically, uh, 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 basically. Um... Well, you can explain. Uh, Elos uh, went ahead and gave a letter that explains some problems that are happening with the 14th Legion, uh, specifically with the commander of the 13th is the one saying the letters, right? Yes, she is. Right. Okay. All right. So basically that. And he's, he's passing it around so everyone can read it. 
Okay, so the commander of the 13th is sending the commander of the 14th letters, and these are those letters? Uh, sending the letters to Eulos, who is Ada's grandfather. Right. So 13th to Eulos is talking about the 14th. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least getting a allowance to go and visit the 14th is, is at least easy. <laughs> At least we don't have so, to worry too much about that. Are we going to read these letters? Uh, the first, the, the first one was already read. Um, yeah, he's only he's only found one of them. Uh, his desk is not the most organized of places, so he got the first one he could put his hands on and has given it to you. Maybe right. the rest of us should search for the letters instead. Um, he, he, if you. Uh, bring up that point. It's like, I mean, you can look, um, but most of them say basically the same things. I really have been meaning to get around to this uh, at some point here soon. Yeah, and the first one that he gave us was basically talking about uh, the commander of the 13th, talking about how some posts that are supposed to be guarded by the 14th haven't been manned in a while. There's been more brigand activity mm -hmm. in areas yeah. where the 14th is supposed to be stationed, um, that sort of thing. And it also mentions at the end of the letter that like, this isn't the first letter that she sent about this. Mm -hmm. Well, then I think one of our first tasks is gonna be clear. We should go to one of the posts where they're supposed to be manned. And if there's any brigands there, Kindly ask them to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Kindly asking doesn't often work. I find that uh, giving them a little incentive is more the way to get them to go. Like cupcakes? <laughs> Lee just stares for a second. And then Caius rubs does make temples. pretty good cookies. Caius does make pretty good cookies. Um, but as Ada says this, like you can tell, like that, yeah, she knows what you mean. <laughs> I swear that sometimes the donkey has more sense. <laughs> All right. Then next up is what? Um, as you all are kind of going over the letter and, and you know, just discussing its contents a little bit further amongst yourself and with uh, Eulos, who appears to be rather pleased that you all are dealing with the issue and, you know, that it's not something that he's got to, to worry about anymore. As he said, he's a very busy man, you know, organizing parties for the senators that are coming and all whatnot. Um, the servant, again, knocks on the door, opens it, um, and says, uh, excuse me, sir, um, the, uh, hang on, I am remembering NPC names. I haven't had a chance to really use them very often. Mm -hmm. Uh, Legget, Legget Batila is here to see you, please. Um, Eulis looks a little bit surprised. Oh, yeah, yes, please, come on in. Um, the servant kind of glances at at the rest of you all, and, you know, Eulis waves them off, like, you know, oh, no, they're, they're fine, they're fine. Uh, tell, tell her to come on in, please. Um, and you, uh, after a moment, the servant dips his head back out, and after a moment, you see a woman in armor step in. Um, and let me move her token over real fast as well. And this, uh, she is, in fact, the same woman who's, uh, who you received, or who sent the letter that you all have just read. Um, she kind of glances at all of you, looks a little bit concerned, um, looks back up at Eulos and, um, you know, rather shortly, you know, we, we need to discuss some things, General. Um, matters have been becoming more urgent of late. And I feel that my letters have been, yeah, you know, my letters have not been quite enough to get your attention. Well, um, if, if it's possible, Ada has better posture than before. <laughs> um, <laughs> and she's going to look at the legate and say, we were actually here discussing the same thing um and then i don't know the honorific to use for a legate but i guess my lady um tack that in on the end you can do that you can use her rank either way 
Okay. I'll, I'll use a rank. She kind of looks at you all. What exactly all right, is um, a legged again? I'm sorry, say again? What's a legged? I don't think I've ever heard that word. That's the uh, commander of a legion. How's it spelled? Uh, here, I'll post, I'll put it on the tabletop discord. Oh. Oh, okay. Makes a lot more sense to me now. I'm thinking like L-E-G-G-I-T. <laughs> yeah. Like somebody, You're thinking like it. Somebody who runs a lot. <laughs> like a messenger. That would be my title. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. Uh, so she kind of... Go ahead, go ahead, sorry. Go, no, I was going to ask if she had anything to say. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, she kind of gives you all, like, a bit of an appraising look, like, you know, nods. Um, she doesn't exactly recognize you guys, um, but, she, you know, ragtag group of people um, who supposedly are going to deal with this issue that she's been bothering him about... Um, just kind of nods, you know, that that's that's good to hear, General. Um, but I I do have a few concerns that I would like to discuss with you privately if we may. Um Yule's kind of chuckles, like, you know, oh, you know, this girl here is my granddaughter. Anything you can tell me, you can tell her. Um Lakaya's face just kind of doesn't really change and he sighs as, you know, all right, very well. Um we we'll we'll talk. Um he turns back to you guys. Um was there anything else I could help you with before I uh, have other business to attend to? Uh, Ada's just going to mention that uh, how he how he offered to send a retinue of soldiers with him. She's going to take a look at the group and especially at um, the fact that Alexander is wielding a firearm and say that 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 probably won't be necessary. Well, it's it's better if you use those resources elsewhere. I mean, nods, you know. Very well, as you wish. Um, oh, I oh. do I do have a question. Yes. We were going to visit somebody in a prison next. Assuming that the guards don't allow anyone to visit her, would you be willing to put in a good word for us or give us some kind of letter that lets us do so? Uh, certainly, certainly. Um, just a moment. Um, he starts... Uh, he starts looking around his desk. He pulls out a piece of parchment, uh, begins frantically looking for a uh, pen of some description. Um, Lakaya kind of sighs, reaches into a uh, just a carry bag that she has at her side, offers one to him. Um, he, you know, oh, thank you, uh, takes it, um, scratches out a quick note, uh, drips a little bit of wax onto it, presses a seal into it, um, passes across to you. The guards uh, give you any trouble at the prison. That this should get you in without any issue. Thank you, and then she hugs him. <laughs> <laughs> and then for he's going to attempt to grab her before she can. <laughs> and then, for no contextual reason, she also hugs a legget. <laughs> um, I'm rolling a strength check to restrain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Yulos like looks a little bit surprised, but after a couple seconds, returns the hug. Um, Lise, go ahead and uh, roll your strength check. I rolled and, a four. Uh, I'm not succeeding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, as as the small drow like desperately tries to hold you back, you also hug uh, Lakaya, and she just goes rigid and stares at you until you stop. <laughs> and then she whispers into her ear, "Nothing is stronger than friendship." <laughs> I'm really deception to hear this. See how bad we're being fucked. <laughs> I rolled an 11. I'm not hearing shit because I rolled a 1. Oh my. This is just like, I don't, this is just looking around thinking you hear something else. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to hear this as well. Also, as a general aside for everybody, if you open up the global window, I went ahead and made like buttons where you can like just push the button to do the roll if you guys want to use that. Um, that's your global, not ours. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was forever. I thought global meant everybody. No, it'd be, oh, it'd be, no. it'd be, it'd be, it'd be cool if it worked like that. But. Uh, see, I already um, I already made something like that. 
uh, here. Um, let me open up the uh, campaign window. And I can't actually edit that because I'm not the GM. But still, I have a standard dice macro set that I can and just import into this if I was a GM. But that would give everyone access to it. Okay. You can probably do that for next time. Yeah. Okay. And uh, my perception was a not very good. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you guys are in close proximity. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to hear. Uh, I rolled a critical fail, so Lee thinks he hears something in another room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so technically speaking, critical failures don't actually apply uh, to skill checks specifically. So, right. like, if the DC was 11 or less, even though your natural was a 1, then you would still pass. So, you, I'll say you can at least tell that, um, that uh, Domitia whispered something to her. And you can tell that the legate is just looking with this look of mixed confusion and surprise and, like, bewilderment at her right now. Mm -hmm. I changed my attention to the legate, and I'm just like, don't mind them. They're just a little bit special. <laughs> All right. Um, so Next as step. you guys... Yeah, as you guys uh, leave the room, uh, as you're shutting the door behind you, um, you faintly hear her asking uh, Yulos, just what kind of people did you hire to deal with this problem? <laughs> um, but you do not hear you, you do not hear the response other than some laughter before you all continue on down the hall and uh, make your way on to uh, bigger and better things. <laughs> I'm just staring in disgust. No more random hugging. <laughs> My hugging is never random, thank you. <laughs> Just don't very... hug me again. You remember last time. No. <laughs> <laughs> Leash is just glaring right now. <laughs> Alright, so presumably I know the direction of the prison. Yes, you would. Alright, then I start heading there. that way. Uh, I, not personally. I'm not a guard. I might have told the guards about some people, but I didn't personally take them to prison. It would be something you're at least, like, roughly familiar with the general direction of it. So, um, you guys are able to, again, make your way through town. It is, um... People are starting to actually, you know, get up. Like, business is starting to, to roll again. Um, as much as it does really anymore. Um, but yeah, you're having to like push your way through, through groups of people a little bit more, especially as you're going through some of like the more, you know, market areas, the more busily traveled areas. Um, as you start getting over to the, uh, the city prison and some of the other guard buildings, there's a lot less foot traffic. People don't tend just to be walking around past it. Um, and the you eventually find the building that you assume is it. It is a fairly stark uh, stone building, uh, very uh, not very much decoration. Um, some of the windows appear to be barred, and the others are uh, narrower on the outside, almost uh, more like arrow slits than proper windows. So fairly fairly decent bet that that this is it. I go ahead and lead the way not only to the door, but inside. Okay. Uh, yes, just where you would keep a crazy lady. <laughs> <laughs> I well, have... We don't, we don't have, have asylums asylum. out here, so... <laughs> I have un... I've just uh, unhidden a map um, for the prison. I don't expect this to turn into combat of any description, but just in case it is necessary, um, that should be visible to you guys now. Um, the door is kind of up in the top right corner of the of the image. So if you guys want to go ahead and just put your put your tokens there, roughly where you would be coming in. Um, we said Ada's taking the lead in case any unless anybody else uh, decides to protest that um, and try to get in ahead of her. So just kind of place yourselves in there. How do I put a token in? Um, as far as I know, you can just copy paste yours from the other side. I don't know if there's a way just to move it directly. 
Okay. Oh, crap, I was muted the whole time. I've been trying to say, um, yeah, I would cut it, not copy it, so that's not on the other map. Could someone do a f okay. me a favor and do that for me, because I can't actually select mine. Okay, I, I was saying, I can't believe I forgot to teach you these, um, shortcut keys. Um, Control e and Control f force your players onto a map and to your current, um, perspective on that map. Okay. So control E for the map, control F for the perspective. I forget which is which. I usually just hit both twice. Uh, okay. Here it is. Control uh, Control E moves them to the map. Control F moves them to your current view. Okay. Yeah, I usually just highlight all the player tokens, cut them, paste them to the new map, and move everybody there. Okay. Soldier. Soldier. <laughs> That guy must have cool parents. Uh, it looks like... Um, yeah, I can see yeah, his stat there. block. Okay. All right. That doesn't matter. Just don't look at it. <laughs> there I am. Okay. Cool. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, I don't know how... T why you can see those necessarily. Did anyone else see his stat block? Uh... Yeah, I can see yeah, it. Yeah, I can see it. Um... Do you have all the ownerships ticked off for the token? Let me double check real quick. Yeah, owner... Hang on, ownership is currently nobody. Huh. I wonder why I can see it. Alright, I've just checked ownership to me, so now see if you can see him. Yep. Still? Okay. Huh. Hmm. Don't worry about it right now. It's not a huge deal. Right. Um, anyhow. I can't see him, so it's just because you're the server host. Right. But Tyler can but see like, him, right? I can, yeah. Yeah. Weird, I can't. Yeah, Hannah can as well. Alright. Whatever. Anyhow. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to move Ada back because she's currently standing on his desk. <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> runs in, leaps on top of desk. Um, Hello. I, I, I know how to make an entrance. <laughs> so yeah, Ada leads the way. Um, Lise and Domitia kind of coming in, um, and then Alexander uh, coming in after her. Uh, the guard kind of looks up. He was uh, making some notes on on the paper. Kind of glances up, gives you all a bit of a. Um, appraising stare and asks, may I help you? We're here to speak with the sweet old lady you arrested earlier. He stops to think for a moment. You mean that crazy beggar woman? Yes, the crazy old bat. Uh, yeah, we. I believe her name is Metia. That's one of the names she's told us over the years. I'm, you're the first person to have described her as sweet. Um... Do you all have a reason for coming to visit this prisoner particularly? We have permission. She knows I about our polyamorous her. relationship. <laughs> and we need an explanation for it. At this point, Lise is just staring and mouthing the words, Shut up. The guard kind of stares at Demisha for a moment, opens his mouth, closes it, opens it again, closes it, decides it's best not to ask, uh, takes the letter, opens it up, looks it over. Hmm. Well, seems to be in order, I suppose. Um, calls for one of the other guards. You hear some footsteps from down the hallway. And just a second. Hang on. I turn to Domitia. Do not hug the old woman. This, this dude reacted like that trope of, well, that's out of my pay grade. I'm, uh, I'm not going to hug a poor, frail old woman. I'll probably just bend over and hold her shoulders. He's got a club! I'm, ha I'm, I'm happy that's where that went. <laughs> Do not touch the prisoners. That's how we get arrested ourselves. Blessed the prisoners. <laughs> good, good life, life rule there. Um, 
overall. Was that in or um, out of character for Alexander? <laughs> yeah, that was in character. <laughs> Lee just because... stares at Alexander and just rubs his temples. Listen, listen at this point, as, at, at this point, it's, uh, that's essentially what it is. Let's be honest. I mean, that word can also mean just bothering people in general. Yes, but Lee's is just amazed that he has dealt with these two for this long. <laughs> also, do you know how to get rid of that infinite span of grass on the outside, or did you want that there? Um, I don't necessarily need it. Uh, I don't know exactly how to get rid of it. Okay, you go to map, you go to edit map, click on background, and you click on the color black. Yeah, I was I was gonna do um, instead of just the black background, I was gonna put it on the on the green. So that's that's fine. Like, okay, it looks it doesn't look quite as out of place as just you know floating there in space. Yeah, if there's a way to like limit the background to only like a certain area, that would be fine. But it's it's okay where it is. Right. So yeah, uh, the guard calls for. Um, another one calls for one of the others. Uh, you hear footsteps coming down the hall. Another um, soldier in armor walks in. Uh, he tells him to, you know, go go take these to that 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 crazy old lady. Uh, they they want to talk to, with her for some reason. Um, the second soldier nods, you know, follow me, and turns around, heads on back down the hall. Uh, we follow. I or at least Ada follows. Well, Domitia follows, of course. Lisa's chaperoning these two, so he's flanking them now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're not in like combat order or anything, so you can just move your move your people around. Um, you go in, you go past another guard who's just kind of um, going about his business. He appears to he appears to be standing watch over the entrance to the cells. Um, in the cells, you see some of them, several of them are empty. Most of them are empty currently. Um, a few have some various uh, ne'er-do-wells and uh, criminals and whatnot. Um, most of them still kind of half asleep, just laying on their on their uh, straw mats and whatnot. Um, the old woman is fairly easy to easy to find um especially for ada who has seen her before i believe she's yeah she's the only one in this group who's actually seen her in person um but in comparison to the others who appear to the other prisoners who appear to just kind of be laying here and you know waiting out their time she is sitting and kind of has her face pressed up against the bars and is just staring at the guards um Side question. I, I feel like I probably know the answer to this, but uh, is Domita actually running around? Don't mind me. That would be a no. Just making sure that the Kitsune is still with the party. I'm not <laughs> trying to hug every single person in the building. Lisa's watching her very close, like... <laughs> <laughs> She's code word for she would be running around if it weren't for Lise. Demisha returns <laughs> the favor and stares at Lise. <laughs> Demisha is very literal. <laughs> um, as you all approach, um, she kind of perks up and um, you notice the guard who had led you there kind of steps around the corner. Um, you get the sense that this lady had just been staring at anybody within eyesight, and that's why the guard, the other guards are around the corner and not, you know, here directly with the prisoners. Um, but she kind of perks up, turns toward Ada, and, um, I see you found the others. This is good, this is good, yes. Ada still doesn't really know what to make of this woman, so, uh, she's gonna glance to the others and see if they have anything they want to say first. I do. How do divorces work? <laughs> You're still on that. <sighs> like, do we split? Do we split everything we own five ways, or? 
<laughs> she glances at Demisha, kind of like cocks her head to one side and is like, well, the gods are the ones who approve the marriage, so you got to get the gods to to uh, break you apart, don't you? And kind of lets out this mad cackle. <laughs> We're not married. You're just a moron. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bit mean. <laughs> and Lee says this with just the deadpan voice. Well, just like, I am so done with you. It makes sense. I mean, gods are basically like genies. <laughs> I did not wish for this. <laughs> then you should have been more careful with your wording. Okay, so yes, yes, I've I've found the others. Um, you seem to know more about this than we do. Um, so, what what is going on here, uh, Metia? She seems a little bit like taken aback at the name, like you know, oh, oh you, you know, you know who I am, kind of kind of expression. But fairly quickly gets just the the pure mania back in her eyes. Like uh, you've had the nightmares too, haven't you? We've all been having them. Um, they're uh, they're coming for us. They're coming for all of us, but for you all in particular. They've marked you. They've taken a particular interest in your group here. Who's they? You're making me really excited. The nightmares. Oh. Night. So they is a thing. Never mind. You can't hug the nightmares. Wait. Wait. <laughs> what if I can? Oh. <laughs> Do I need to get some handcuffs for you? <laughs> to handcuff her to the nightmares? We're not that level of friend yet, least. <laughs> and we never will be, thankfully. Then I guess you don't have to buy handcuffs. <laughs> At this point, Lise just walks around the corner. <laughs> and he's just standing there, shaking his head. <laughs> what do you tell us about the nightmares, Metia? Just completely blocking out everything going on beside me with Domitia and Lise, or at least attempting to block it out. Well, they aren't of our world, are they? They need, they need, uh, they need people to do to do their bidding here. And they're looking, they're um, they're always searching for a connection that they can use to jump to come into our our realm. Your mind is weaker when you're sleeping. You see, um, they're good at. Uh, nudging their way into dreams and uh, causing causing unquiet in the mind. They like unquiet minds. They're they're uh, tastier to them. And she cackles again, just madly. Um, <clears throat> our uh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> someone has let them in. They have. They have uh, given them a foothold, and now they're hungry for more. They're hungry for more minds to control and to consume. And they're and. Uh, for more people that they can uh, pull in and uh, become and uh, have, yeah, words I can do words. Um, more people that they can uh, make like they are. Okay, list of questions. One, who's letting them in? Two, what do these symbols actually mean, and how do we get rid of them? And three, uh, how do we stop the nightmares? As far as who's let them in, well, I'm not entirely sure about that, am I? Um, I'm just a, just a crazy old woman on the street, and she, again, cackles, um, confirming that she is indeed a crazy, crazy old woman. Um, <laughs> it seems kind of weird that you acknowledge that you're crazy, as if you have the sanity to realize that you are such. <laughs> who's, who's crazy, or the crazy person who knows they're crazy, or the sane person who thinks they aren't? Uh... <laughs> Just probably the, the same f- person who thinks they aren't. Probably the <laughs> first one, actually, since you know the same person isn't crazy. <laughs> uh, she she laughs again. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't I don't know exactly who has uh, who has uh, succumbed to the nightmares, but they like to target people with uh, with influence and power. That's why they left me. That's why they uh, left me behind. You see, I'm nobody in particular. Um, they came for me, and they but uh, didn't have too much use for me. You see, um, 
As far as those symbols, as far as getting rid of them, well, the only way, uh, the only right way to do so is either to deal with the nightmares that are hunting that are hunting you, or to succumb to them. And she laughs again. Um, well, you can you can try to try to wash them away. You can try to cover them over, but they will never forget you, and they will never stop hunting you. Okay. May I see your arm? She shakes back her sleeves and again on both of her arms is just this myriad of of symbols you can't tell which or how many of them are you know natural tattoos versus other markings you know perhaps the same type as yours um but scattered all up and down her arms are similar eye symbols and other other shapes um there are there are skulls there are um patterns of flame or that are uh, similar just small symbols just kind of haphazardly strewn all up and down her arms um she's shaking her her sleeves back most of the way the tattoos appear to continue further up her body so where'd you get all these tattoos the nightmares left them and she laughs so does that mean we're gonna get more tattoos if we keep having nightmares and uh, again, mad cackle. Um, oh no, I, I seriously doubt it. Um, <clears throat> me, they they uh, took what they could from me and left me behind. You, on the other hand, I think they've got more of an interest in you. How do we stop them? Well, you're going to have to find them. You're going to have to find them in their own realm. They can't be they can't be killed not with uh, mortal weapons here. You can't. You can't stab a nightmare or swing at it with that pretty battle axe of yours. You must uh, find out, uh, find a way into into the uh, into the realm of dreams and defeat them there. And how do we do that? And uh, she kind she just glances you up and down, is like, "Well, that's for you to find out, isn't it?" And cackles. <laughs> Uh, Lise is actually standing here a little bit baffled because he doesn't actually sleep, so he's trying to figure out how they got their way into his meditations. I was going to ask about that. Uh, so he actually walks up towards the uh, woman's cell and just stares at her for a second. If they come in through dreams, how are they bothering me? Um, she kind of glances at you and... Um, <clears throat> Well, you have a mind, don't you, little elf? You have an imagination, and you have terrors that lurk within it. That's not the same as sleeping and dreaming. Yeah, close enough for some things. <laughs> uh, if you need to find a good enough reason, couldn't it just be that, uh, you know, the, medita- the meditative state still puts your mind at ease temporarily, right? It's not like it you're does. fully aware. So I imagine it's just enough of a sleep-like state to have a similar effect. Actually, Reverie is a completely aware state. Okay. Really? Like yes. They're in meditation, but they are completely aware of their surroundings. Okay, then they make you hallucinate. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that's what I'm thinking it is. Like, yeah. uh, from an out-of-character perspective. That's why he's trying to figure it out. Yeah, out of character, typically speaking, elves don't really dream uh, when they trance. Um, and I'm not sure the way you're talking about it sounds like the reverie for the drow is slightly different even from the elves' trance. Um, it is slightly different, yes. Yeah, but it's still a state where your mind, even though you're aware of your surroundings, you're at ease. It's kind of when you're least connected to, you know, what's the, the physical world around you, I guess. Um, so... Typically speaking, an elf would not be subject to nightmares, which is something that probably would have contributed to least freaking out about the one that he did have. Like, this is not something that you experience normally, like, at all. Um, but there is still enough of a of a weakness there, um, of, like, a loosening the kind of the boundaries between, like, sleeping and waking to for something to potentially push its way through. Uh, that works and he's actually just standing there thinking because that and he's just stroking his chin that might actually be the clue we need especially if uh especially if like they've already drawn some power from from other people which it sounds like from the way she's talking they have been right (laughs) 
Okay. That was more enlightening than I thought it would be, actually. Mm -hmm. So Ada's going to turn to the others and say, well, I don't know much about slipping between planes and existence, but I think our summoner might. We have a summoner. <laughs> <laughs> Ada's just going to gesture to the giant Io behind her and say, well, how do you think he got here? He's just a normal man who likes a mask. What's so wrong about that? <laughs> He's just very quiet. He's good at his job. I'll explain on the walk Wait. back to... Where is Caius right now? He's at a shop. Oh, he didn't come with yeah, us? Yeah, I... Okay. I well, thought, I, I, have, I, I have to keep my shop open. <laughs> okay, well, what are you going to do when we go on the adventure? Come well, with I'm, us. Well, no, no today, I said the shop would be open today. I'm going to put uh, I'm gonna put someone in charge while I'm away when we're gone. Who? Someone from town. I'll hire them. I'll, I'll say that, like, you have, like, one or two people who work at the shop. You know, it might be, like, an on and off kind of thing. Like, when you need mm -hmm. extra help, you hire them on. So right. you've got a few folks that you could trust to run it for, yeah, cause, a, cause, you know, Because obviously while. I can't, because obviously I can't leave Kai. I mean, not Kai's, uh, EOC it's here. Do, do you not have any, like, friends or family in this town? No, they're, they are dead. Uh, I don't have any family left in the town, no. I said friends or family. Friends? Well, my only major friend is Eustitia. That's one of the reasons why he summoned him in the first place. You're a merchant in a big town and didn't make any friends? He's not very, so I'm not very sociable. Anyway, uh, Ada's going to explain what Eustitia is as we walk our way back to Don't Mind the Spook, unless you guys have any further questions for Crazy Lady. She appears to be singing quietly to herself in a language you all don't actually recognize. It might be gibberish. You don't know. <laughs> Lee keeps looking back at her and it just he's got a glint in his eyes that Domitia will probably recognize as the glint he normally has before he does something impish. I have a rank in linguistics. Can I try and determine what language it is, if any? Sure, roll it. Uh, let's see. My bonus is plus six, so twenty-four. Okay, that is a lot. Um, it doesn't appear to be a language specifically. Um, it she is kind of swapping between a few. Um, you pick up a little bit of like heavily corrupted, um, like elven and dwarven uh, in there, as if like. Like someone who doesn't speak those languages very well, you know, just using a word or two potentially. Um, a lot of it is a language, um, the, your best guess is a language called Aklo, which is spoken by things that you really don't want to have a lot of uh, contact with usually. Usually uh, aberrations, things not of this world, weird stuff. Okay, so it's like, um, it's like a primal language. Sort of, yes. Like a, like a root language, like. Doesn't um don't psychopomp speak Aklo? They might. Uh, they might, but Idolans specifically speak only the same languages as their summoner. Okay, all right. No worries then. Just that yes. I ask, maybe it'd be helpful. <laughs> Is there uh, anything else you'd like to ask of old Grandma Metis? Yes. Or Metia, excuse. me. Domitia reaches both of her arms through the bars and says, Come here. Do not touch the crazy hag. <laughs> I think she's going to do what she wants. I'm just half expecting her to start gnawing on her arms now. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to decide exactly what she does. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> she... Re she like kind of leans down sniffs at your hand and like rubs her face against your arm Oh, so she's the cat cool <laughs> still singing the entire time that's adorable <laughs> that's disturbing I'm gonna need to come back and give him some treats no <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, once Do he eventually defied a guard. <laughs> Say again, someone says something about the guard. Uh, Lisa just stares at like, do I need to go get the guards? <laughs> okay, Demisha removes her arms from the cage and says, bye. <laughs> I miss you. She says, um, she kind of looks at you all and is like, I doubt this will be the last time we see each other and laughs maniacally again. <laughs> I really hope it is. <laughs> Um, as you all leave, the guards seem a little bit freaked out. Like the, the two that are kind of still standing in the hallway, um, they're kind of glancing at each other at you all. Like, I hope you all got what you needed because just listening to that was strange. <clears throat> and they they kind of like give you guys a wide berth, not like you know, not like they're you know particularly mistrustful of you or anything, but just there was all this talk about nightmares and being hunted, and, and just in case it can rub off from proximity, they're just gonna keep a little bit of a distance, just in case, just to be safe. All right. Okay. <laughs> As Demisha leaves, she uses both hands to blow kisses to the guards. <laughs> We're all back on Hibernia now. Yep. Oh, do you want to try using the shortcut keys? One of the... Oh, hang on. Yeah, uh, what was it? Control-E and Control-F? Yep. There you go. It worked. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, one of... Uh, you blow kisses to the guards as they leave. One of them blows a kiss back and is promptly kind of like smacked on the shoulder by <laughs> one of the other guards. <laughs> He just kind of shrugs like, what? <laughs> and then as Demisha leaves the prison, she whispers to herself, One. <laughs> nice. God, is she gonna just, like, skin that guy one day? <laughs> is that what it sounds like? Lise is just staring at her and just, he grumbles, Do I need to turn you into a kite again? A kite? A kite? Huh? <laughs> Uh, for the record, he has actually casted Levitate on her before and tied a rope to her and just pulled her along <laughs> while they were adventuring. <laughs> and that's what he's referring to by, do I need to turn you into a kite again? Oh, oh, like that. I thought I was dreaming because it was too fun to be real. <laughs> Although he, he keeps looking at Ida, who's probably confused by the reference of, do I need to turn you into a kite? <laughs> certainly. Most certainly. <laughs> All right. And uh, real quick, uh, I think I need to leave because I've been getting like more and more sick as the stream's been going on. Sick? Uh -oh. What do you mean? I think I might have food poisoning. From what? Oh, no. I I went to Wendy's today and it, something about it didn't taste quite right. Oh. And then like as the day's been going on, I've been feeling like worse and worse. Did you get chicken? Yes. Um, like a chicken sandwich or chicken tenders? Uh, chicken nuggets. Uh. Hmm. Maybe they were slightly undercooked. That's what I'm thinking. That's probably the case. It's unfortunate. Food poisoning is not fun. No, it really isn't. Well, I was actually just about to say around 11 o'clock that we had to wrap things up around 11.30, but this actually seems like a good spot to stop anyway. Oh, you wanna... I mean, it seems a bit early, doesn't it? I mean... Well, yeah, but one of our players has to leave and... <laughs> we don't want... got an interview tomorrow. <laughs> oh, he does? Really? Already? Wow. Yep. Nice. Yeah, it was one that I... It was in the works I just hadn't heard officially back from it, and today I was, like, uh, like officially got in touch with him and set up the meeting, so... All right. Yeah. And I have to Ooh. get up at 8 tomorrow morning and go to the community counseling center for a six plus hour psychological evaluation. Really? Oh boy. Yep. Wow. I believe in you. I do as well. I hope it goes well. It's um, going to be long. I was told to bring my own lunch. Well, if if that's if that's the case, um then we're going to be ending off then. Uh I guess what should we, should we do like a uh, session review? Before we end off, then or what? Okay, we can. So, what What did I hear about someone bringing their own lunch? I said that about my, my about my exam tomorrow. E exam. 
Oh nice. wow, you must be you must be really out of it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Peach is having a six-hour psychological evaluation at the community counseling center tomorrow. Christ, why? It's for my OVR services. It's to help me get an actual job that I want, like doing oh. what I like doing with my art. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that I'm so not stuck as a cashier forever. Yeah. Six hours, though. Jesus Christ. Well, it's for it's for a good good cause. So. Okay, so in summary, all of our characters are having nightmares, some of the forts aren't being manned, and mm. we've all been chosen by something and marked with tattoos for some reason. The old lady probably knows more than she's letting on, mm -hmm. and next time we're probably going to get packed up and head on over to... Castrum, right? Ur Ursus Town. Yeah, mm -hmm. Custom Custom Liberium, um, the head, the main fort of the Legion that's been having issues. Yeah, yeah, the right. castration library. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's what we're going to be doing next time, which, uh, let's see, I know I scheduled us for two games this week. Uh, Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, Thursday at 9 p.m. Yeah, I can make that, so we're good. All right, so Indonesia I... needs a leash. So I guess in character we all just go back to um, Caius's shop and fill him in on everything, and I guess we'll pick up there. Right. Yeah. I think I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Yep. Yes, we will pick up at Don't Mind the Spook. <laughs> <laughs> all righty, guys. Um, well, thank you all for coming in and playing, and hope it was enjoyable thus far. It's been a little bit of a slow start, but getting the party together is usually yeah, a little bit rocky. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, it works. Uh, one more thing that we gotta do, uh, Richard. Yes. Rather than have me save the campaign and send you a copy, you can just save the campaign right now, and you'll have a All copy right. of this thing that I have open. Alrighty. Uh, let me do that real quick. I'm gonna drop out of the server now. Yep. Yeah. You go sleep. Yeah. Please. Please get well, and uh, you know, just um. Yeah, I'll see yeah. you guys when I'm less infectinated with that. <laughs> infectinated. Yeah. Infectinated. Don't worry. You were really quiet. <laughs> yeah, uh, hope, you, hope you're feeling better soon. All right, good night, Kazi. All right. No, but, right. uh, yeah. Yeah, I just, I saved, um, saved the campaign file, so that should have everything updated to the current point. Mm -hmm. Also, I've been, um, periodically over the course of the session, when not much was going on, I was working on some more macros for my character. Okay. I completed this, so now it's all nice and pretty. Nice. And I also started making macros for my spells. Like, here's Dancing Absolutely. Lights, mm -hmm. Detect Magic, which is unfinished, uh, Light, Lullaby, and Mage Hand. Mm-hmm. Let me know if any of those like look weird. You can look over my macros later. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, that's gonna be interesting. We have someone who cannot cast light and someone who can cast darkness. <laughs> I, like I like this party. party. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can only do darkness once a day right now. I I have a couple questions about the rules. Sure. Um, since my spells are technically all psychic abilities do i need a like a focus for them like an implement of some kind um unless they one. are yeah unless they're marked as having a focus requirement no by default you do not how do i know if they have a focus requirement um it translates to because i know that for all of these spells they're listed under the arcane heading but i believe it translates to you have to have mental and emotional focus whereas an arcane caster needs verbal and somatic um and you still do have to have the material component but um you the the cool thing about psychic casters is they can cast silently and without gesturing instead of the verbal and somatic stuff and i believe it's um, the verbal is the emotional focus, and the somatic is the mental focus. Wait, so I don't need and to... What? I don't need to Go pay ahead. attention to my spell's components at all? 
You do, but they're slightly different since you're casting from a different tradition than they were written for. Uh, since your magic is psychic instead of arcane. Um, so and I, just, I, can I just need find... to be able to think and feel emotions in order to cast them, right? Right. Um, the emotional focus particularly translates into you can't be in like an altered emotional state. So if somebody casts a fear effect on you, then you're going to have to start making concentration checks to cast successfully in the same way that a normal caster who could not speak or could not use his hands properly um, would have to. The mental focus, I can't recall the exact um, restrictions on that one, but again, basically, you know, having clear control of your thoughts as well as your emotions. It's actually really nice because a, it's a lot harder to disable a psychic caster than it is to disable a arcane one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I had a second question. I forget what it was now. Well, okay. um, if you think of it, let me know. Um, and yeah, you guys can get in touch with me. We haven't had a chance to dive too much into the rules yet in terms of like yeah. how combat works and things. Uh, I, um, I remember and... my other question. Okay. Um, according to light, it says that it can be used to dispel darkness spells of equal level or lower. But light is a right. zero level spell. Am I capable right. of casting zero level spells with spell slots? Uh, no, you can't up the, well, yes and no. Um, it's not like in 5th edition where you can cast a spell using a higher level spell slot by default. I th I'm pretty sure that's how casting works in 5th edition. Well, yeah, but you wouldn't um, normally be able to do that with a cantrip even in 5th edition. Right. Um, there is a feat that you can take. There are metamagic feats that alter the way that your spells work. Um, and if you take the heightened spell metamagic feat, that means that you can cast your spells as a higher level by using a higher level spell slot, basically. So in that case, you could cast light out of a, say, a second level spell slot, and it would count as a second level spell in that case. Um, <clears throat> I believe that's how that functions in general. Okay. Um, but again, it's a particular feat that you need in order to be able to do that. All right, no more questions for now. Uh, all right, so stream over then? Well, I haven't ended the stream, but yes. All right. See you everybody at Thursday right. then. Yep, if not see y'all. Yep, bye. Well, all before right. I go, uh, I did want to say one thing. Uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Richard. Uh, the game was great. Uh, I think sure. that you, I think that your style... Uh, of, of DMing is very much in, in line with what I enjoy. Um, you do spend a lot of time like detailing stuff, you know, that is around or whatever, especially like the, the dream descriptions in the beginning. Those were quite fun. Uh, you seem to be aware of uh, kind of moving things along when they need to be moved along, which I appreciate. Uh, some people get really caught up in the whole like, what do you do? What do you do kind of stuff? So I'm glad mm -hmm. that you're able to move that along when you need to. Um, I, I, know, I know you're not looking for reviews, but I'm just saying that I, I, I'm very happy with the way that, that things are going so well thank you i'm very glad to hear that um it i have dm'd before but it has been a while um mm -hmm. and i've done a little bit of dming like play by post and you know that that's been more recent than the last right. time i've done a group face to face so i am i am glad to hear that thank you um i will say some of the helping things move along was hannah she did give me a bit of a poke every now and then um but still um i'm glad you all i'm glad you at are enjoying the campaign so far. I hope it continues to be enjoyable. Right. Okay. Um, I do have one minor criticism. Okay. Uh, during the scene when we were talking to Ada's grandfather and the Legate, it was difficult for me to tell which of them was talking at each time, because their manners of speaking were way too similar. That's that's fair. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to I'll try to make that a little bit more clear when there are two NPCs interacting with mm -hmm. each other on screen but i'm not like you know the, the folks over at like um critical role and stuff you know they're all voice actors and they do all kinds of voices and i would love to be able to do that kind of thing and i just don't quite have the talent to do different voices and things and i'll i'll, I'll try to keep that in mind i'll try to make sure it's it's clear okay like even if you just have to narrate like who's talking when right mm -hmm. 
No, because I don't. I don't mind you not putting that much in the voices or anything like that. It's fine. You make it clear. You give it to everyone their own identity. So I think that's good enough, in my opinion. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. But yeah, okay. I'll get go. I'll get going then. So. Hey. Right. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.